everyone welcome everyone to the live chat this saturday my good friend squad captain right there late night trip welcome happy saturday to you too thank you for stopping by um tonight it's uh i hope you're having a fantastic um weekend this saturday has been <coughs> sorry i'm coughing a little bit i was working in the yard again this weekend uh saturday uh, in the morning doing some work finishing some touches to from my yard the, hap the wife is happy then uh, we went out for dinner that's the reason i'm running kind of late right now and uh, we went out for dinner you know went to the store all of that kind of stuff and i just got to the you know here and i'm rushing trying to get all this stuff ready but i want to say to all of you thank you um definitely this this week has been fantastic for collectors around the world uh, whether you collect action figures or um statues there's been a lot of great reveals as always. I don't think this week has been as packed as previous weeks. Uh, we revealed, which is good. It means that I don't have to spend so much time talking about a lot of things. And definitely, uh, I want to concentrate, probably start uh, from kind of moving forward to try to concentrate more on the highlights or the things that I like the most rather than covering everything. So that way we don't have to be here eight hours, like four hours, almost four hours now on this live streams. But it, it's fun. You know, I, I, I enjoy it. I have fun with it. Uh, so um, definitely I want to say thank you for your support. Don't forget to leave a like uh, To leave a comment. Let me know if you're watching um, All of you Yeah, prime one showcase is coming which is is you know And the, the sad part of that is that this next week I'm gonna be out. I'm going we, we're celebrating uh, my anniversary with my wife So we're gonna be out, uh, away. We're going on a and a long weekend getaway We're gonna be out the week. We're not coming back till probably Sunday next week, so I'm not gonna have time to do a live video and it's gonna be on Friday Which you know, I'll, I'll watch the video wherever I'm at, you know, and in a hotel room or whatever I'll be watching the video for sure and uh, Maybe I'll you know, when I get back in the following week. Uh, I'll share my opinion Maybe uh, make an anticipation video or a video. There's a lot to talk about You know, it was a surprise and I know people are excited definitely um, and I want to talk about it in depth when that time comes uh, definitely the excitement is there to see what prime one is doing and what they're going to do uh, So I think um, a lot of people are excited for it. We don't know what to anticipate I think there's gonna be some big changes in, in the way they're doing it I already can foresee some of that in the the in, in the collectibles market what they're doing I think that we're going to see more smaller scale stuff um, You know, they're definitely going in that direction in some of those lines. There's you know, heavy competition and some companies are really producing whether it's quarter scale, whether it's one six scale, there's a lot of competition, even in figurines. And I think they're already kind of going there. We've been talking about it in the past, you know, videos. We've been talking about and we've been seeing that that 
that trend that is going with uh, Prime One Studio, some of the releases they have at the more affordable side. We'll see what the, the future will will hold, but I'm uh, really excited. I think exciting times and, and see, because right now everybody pays attention to Prime One Studio. Not only collectors are paying attention to Prime One Studio, companies are paying attention to Prime One Studio. I think they're uh, at this moment at the forefront, dictating the trends, uh, pushing other companies to do all the same. And definitely we have seen that change and the way companies are interacting with the communities, uh, the different communities, the different collectors. Uh, and it's a lot to do with the way Prime One has been handling their social media feed, the way they're handling and the way they're tackling all those things and promoting this stuff, which I think is amazing. So we'll see more of that. <clears throat> I'm sorry for the coughing because definitely it's still uh, springtime. So there's a lot of pollen out there and working outside. Definitely it's not, it doesn't help. So I, I have a little bit of a, uh, I'm not necessarily as bad. It wasn't as bad, but I'm a little bit bothered by it right now. In any case, uh, just to give you an idea what we're going to cover tonight, uh, I'm going to cover uh, some companies that we are. I, I want to cover. I want to talk about Tamashi Nations. Normally, I don't talk about Tamashi Nations, but they have a release that looks interesting. We're going to cover it today. Uh, if you're a Macros fan, definitely there. I love Macros. I grew up with Robotech, so definitely looking forward to, you know, always looking forward to those type of releases, anything that has to do with the big Macros, the big Mecha, the, BF, the BFs. Uh, I love them. Uh, Marvel Legends, uh, they they re-release the Kingpin for the Spider-Man Retro Collection. This is something that was sold out. Uh, it's going crazy on the aftermarket. At least it's never less than $100. But right now with this re-release, people are excited. And I'm definitely, I miss the opportunity to grab that one. Even though I saw it at the, uh, many, many times, even at a local GameStop. I went a couple times, they got it sitting there forever. And I say, eh, come back at another time. But this time I'm not going to, you know, you know, I'm not going to F around. I'm not going to, I'm not going to forget. I'm definitely going to get two for my collection. One for to get out of the box and one to display. But we're going to look at it today. It's um, it's good that when they are releases, at least for action figures, in my opinion, uh, we're going to look at Haya Toys. Uh, Haya Toys, uh, you know, it's always been kind of on the cheaper side, but Haya Toys is actually kind of moving forward in the 112 scale. And definitely they, they trying to give the run for their money to companies like Mesco with the more high-end 112 scale figures with a lot of different parts and, you know, clothing parts and articulation and different accessories. It's kind of cool. So we're going to look at it today. They definitely, they're going in that direction. We're going to look at three zero. We're going to look at hot toys. Of course, every week they have a release. I want to talk about mega house. Uh, this company has a lot of releases, particularly in size. Now such is carrying mega house. This company has been in business for a long time, uh, but definitely we're going to look at some of the releases they have at SciShow. I want to look at uh, Prime One Studio, of course. Prime One Studio, we 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 know that the the Showcase 11 is coming, but this week they release a uh, piece for the 110 scale collectible line that they have for Jurassic Park. We're going to look at it today. Uh, we're going to look at PCS, that juggernaut 110 scale for the Marvel vs. Capcom collection. Looks fantastic. Very cool looking. Uh, yeah, I love that. That that juggernaut looks amazing, in my opinion. I'm definitely gonna get it. We're gonna look at McFarlane toys. Of course, this week they had a big win. At least Todd did. Um, and I have some some disappointment about that. I'm gonna share with that time comes about why I'm disappointed with the whole thing that they did with the Batman versus Spine 110 scale diorama, which looks amazing, by the way. It looks amazing. We're gonna look at it, but definitely there's a lot that I want to talk about that today. Uh, we're gonna look also to Kotobukiya. They released a dart mold. It's a, another re-release of a previous uh, artifacts uh, statue that they have. You know, years ago, they re-released it with different color variation. We're going to look at it today. We're going to look at also uh, a reused uh, studio. Uh, if you're a one, six, uh, one piece collector, there's a one six scale statue they released this week. Blissway, uh, definitely Blissway always also surprises. They have a new, a new Rocky uh quarter scale statue we're gonna look at it today they've been producing a lot of rocky statues but this is a new one uh they a new vari variation variant it seems like they're doing a lot of variants now uh we're also gonna look at divine statue this company that does a lot of things collaboration with xm studios they also they are now doing more cenoscope stuff um they if you're a fan familiar with the cenoscope comic book line or the comic book publisher so they're going uh, into that they've been doing a lot of stuff with uh you know in this case the um uh, Top Cow Productions with the uh, Sylvester stuff, but now also they're going into the Cenoscope stuff. 
Uh, we're going to look at SciShow, of course. We're going to look. I talk about the Batman PF. We talked about it last week. I want to kind of continue now that we can see the prices and we have official pictures. We're going to look at the pictures. Uh, we're going to look at Infinity Studio. They have an avatar, uh, Nate Thierry, uh, one third scale statue. We're going to look at it today. JND Studios, of course. We cannot miss that with the new uh, Michelle Pfeiffer Catwoman from Batman Returns. People are super excited with this. There's two different variations. There's actually a, a two pack, and there's the basic one. We're going to look at it. Sold out completely at the website. It's still available at some places. They carry it like Spec Fiction. We're going to look at it today. We're gonna look, and I want to talk about NECA toys. They also saw that uh, in um, they have some life-size statues. Uh, they have, and um, they have right there a uh, spec fiction. We're gonna look at it today. I've seen it many times before, uh, but I never really talk about it. But I want to cover them today. I want to kind of give my opinion about what I think about this styrofoam. That's what they are. Uh, life of foam life-size replica so we're gonna look at it today so definitely there's a lot of cool stuff today so uh, you know I, I invite you again to stay with me tonight if for some reason you're unable to be with me all night uh, don't forget and uh, you know oh don't don't worry either because I, tomorrow i will have the timestamp so you can always come back if for some reason you cannot watch the whole uh, video tonight and you can come back and watch the the you know case the replay but in any case, my friends, I want to say thank you very much for, for being here with us tonight and for the great support. All right, so now that we are doing this, let me um, kind of get you, let's get started. You know, let's get started. Let's, you know, let's get to it. But welcome to everyone. Again, don't forget to leave a like and to subscribe. You're watching this and you like the, the, the contents of this channel. So while I have you here, let me see if I can take you there. No, I cannot. Right there. Yeah, we are there. So I'm going to go to SciShow first. All right. So we're going to look at it. Not, I'm not going to talk about everything here. Uh, there's a couple of things that I'm going to skip today, and that's fine. You know, there are a lot of things that... We can always come back later down the road and talk about those things. But I want to cover uh, about this one right here. This, the BF-19. This is, uh, you know, we're covering now the action figures. I want to cover this by Tamashination. This is the BF-19 Custom Fire Valkyrie. This is $130. Normally, I don't talk about Tamashinations. I'm not never always crazy about Tamashi. I think that a lot of the things they produce, they're on the cheap side. A lot of the figures, I'm not ever convinced to them. They do great stuff. Uh, and the figure side, uh, sometimes, you know, sometimes they just not necessarily that great, but sometimes they, you know, they, they, you know, they strike gold in my opinion. There are times where I like what I see. And the reason why I like this particular figure, uh, this is because I'm a macros fan. And this is from the macros seven TV series that happened in, in the nineties. This is in the big macro saga. There were so many, there have always been so many different mini series and series. And you know, it's a whole saga thing. You know, I'm more familiar with the original macro saga and of course, Robotech than the, everything that came afterwards. There's so much stuff. But what I like about this one is just, I, I it struck me. I love the colors. I always liked this Valkyrie, the design of this in, the, in this animated series. Uh, but this is not necessarily the first time that this has been produced. This is actually a re-release of another model that was produced by Yamato. Yamato that was produced like like five, six years ago. And this is technically a re-release, but now under the Tamashi Nations. I'm not sure if Yamato was, was being bought, was bought by Tamashi Nations, was part of Tamashi, Tamashi Nations. I know that, that that came through Yamato, that came in Japan, and it had to be imported, that model replica. But if you look at, if I went back and I was looking at some of the videos and some of the old photographs, and it's the same model. So to me is that, okay, so they release it, but of course the Machinations is selling it. You can, uh, here in North America, rest of the world, you can find this a big bad toy store. They have it now, Saisha, of course, Saisha now is carrying all of these things. So this is a re-release all around. I went through all of it, it's the same part, the same elements. I love it because he has a lot of great things. He has even the, the guy in the cockpit the tiny little figure, you can transform this into the full airplane mode and you can have it displayed that way. Uh, you can, you know, change the little parts. It's not that big. It's a very tiny figure. You can come to think of it. Uh, I think it might be even smaller now looking at it, it's a six inches. So it might not even be as big as the Yamato. I think the Yamato was weird. I'm not sure if it was the case, but it is so similar. 
It's only like six inches, so it's not bad. So this is within one sixtieth scale or something like that. But you can it's very posable. Here is in full form, as you can see. That is kind of cool. For those who love mecha stuff, I am a big fan of mecha stuff. I love mecha, it's one of the, my guilty pleasures. I love anything that's to do with mecha. I love animation with mecha. You know, I love the toys with mecha. I love video games with of mechas. You know, it's just it's just kind of cool. And you can see the weapons. You see how possible it is, and it's kind of cool. Even they they have different porters. I think different things that you can change out and you can pose and you know what this figure and you actually the bombs there too the missiles and i think does have maybe i don't know if it has some light up features but it seems like it does it's a pretty cool design I i'll tell you this and here's the base as you can see the tf19 custom fire valkyrie um the base kind of cool i liked it that they went instead of the black they went to the this red design it kind of kind of complements the the whole plane mode but it looks really 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 cool so let's see like yamato valkyrie what is that bf nine i think that's what it is yeah here, Yamato Macro 7. Okay, Yamato Valkyrie. Okay, so here you can see there is even a video here on YouTube. Um, this is from 2011. So this is the same model. Technically, it's the same model that was... I don't want to see a commercial, so we're doing that. I don't know if you can see that with me. But here is... That's the same model by Yamato. As you can see, this is from 2011. So that tells you that that is even 10 years old. And that's something that I, I seen a lot of companies doing now. They doing a lot of re-releases. This has been released several times. So it's not new, but it seems like companies, they, you know, this is the thing. A lot of companies are, I think we're getting to see a lot of where companies are re-releasing figures and statues and also re-releasing with different things. And I think it's because they're going into, and it's also a sign of the market and the, the way the industry is going, uh, that there's a lot of, you know, they want to play it safe. You know, they want to make money where it's easier to make money. So here, I think this is a Yamato 1200 variable fighter collection. So they have a few. There's a few models, but you know, if you go even on this video, I think this is the one. This is all the models that they have done right there. But you can see, you can find it there. They all have it also at Big Bad Toy Store, Entertainment Earth. You can find it a lot of places. I always like this, you know, this, this figures. And again, I'm a big fan of Yamato. This is, look at this one. This is the, yeah, the Macros VF-19 Custom Fires. The VF-19, I'm sorry. Look at how much it costs on eBay. $390, $400 for the original for this one. It is the same model that now Tamashii Nations is releasing. And you can see the figure right there. The title of figure. It's the same model. But of course, this was produced by Yamato. And uh, as far as I know, it's the same scale. You know, I don't think it's... Here you can see another... Although sometimes you can find the like the cheap versions. Uh, it's a very sought out. Uh, the Yamato particularly is very sought out, but there's different variations, different models. This is the Bandai. So there's always been, this is a very popular figure over the years. It's been re-released, a form, a change. And, you know, many companies have done the same thing. Um, but if you're into this kind of thing, then definitely it's something cool to look at. Squad Captain, are you going to live stream the Prime One Studio Showcase, JP? No, unfortunately, no, because as I mentioned earlier in the video, I'm not, I'm not, uh, I did mention that um, I'm going to be away next week. I'm going on 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 a pretty much I'm going on vacation with my wife. We we're celebrating our anniversary, so technically we're doing a a we're actually celebrating the twentieth anniversary uh, of marriage. So we're going on a trip. So we're gonna be away. Uh, so I'm gonna be away from the house. I'm not coming back till probably Sunday, maybe Saturday or Sunday. But of course, you know, after a long trip, you're tired. So no, I'm not gonna be able to live stream it. I'm gonna watch the video where I'm at, wherever I'm at in a hotel room for sure. So I'm gonna have to watch it then. 
but I'm not coming back. I'm not going to be able to last him, which is just a bummer that they chose the time that if I would have known ahead of time, maybe I would have changed the date. But of course, this is uh, we're celebrating our anniversary this particular week. And that's when we're doing this long weekend getaway thing. So, um, so yeah, no, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm not going to be able to, but I'll talk about it. I'll have a video in the aftermath. Maybe I'll do a video prior to, I'm not sure if I'm going to have the time to do it because we're going to be away. I'm going to, I'm going to be at work maybe Monday or Tuesday, but I'm, I'm, I'm going to be gone Tuesday. Uh, so I'm not going to be able to, so sorry for that, but yeah, next, the following week, uh, I'll probably make a video, my highlights. So I'll talk about the things that I did like the most and I didn't dislike besides, of course, the live video that we'll do the following week. So yeah, that's what we're going to do. But yeah, this Valkyrie is kind of cool. So you're into it. Uh, the price, I think, is $130. It's fine. It's not big, but yeah, definitely there are a lot of parts. Definitely for fans of the macro saga, the, this is another addition. I know it's going to it's gonna do well. Uh, we're going to have some people buying it. So now I want to take you now to... Um, we're going to leave a SciShow. I'm going to take you to Big Bad Toy Store. I could take you actually to... Um, to Hasbro Pulse, but the figure that I want to talk about today, which is uh, here, Marvel Legends sold out at Hasbro Pulse, unfortunately, and it might even sold out here. It was not sold out this morning, but appears that it sold out now. <laughs> oh, wow. It was, I saw it this morning. Oh my God. And now it's sold out. King Ping. Oh, sold out. Look at this. It was there available this morning. It's released in July and it's already sold out and I haven't even made my order. <laughs> Look at this. It's re being re-released, uh, which a lot of people are excited for it. Um, I, I, you know, I'll tell you, I, as I mentioned earlier, I skip, I, I had the opportunity to get this figure so many times. I went to the, you know, they added at the local, uh, th during that time, I was not collecting Marvel Legends. You know, I, I collected a lot of figures over the years and I piled them up, but then I stopped pretty much collecting for a while. So I wasn't really collecting Marvel Legends. It's been a, it has been a while from that. So I saw it. I liked it. I think there was a fantastic looking figure, but I say I come back for it and I kind of missed it, you know, and I forgot about it. And then I came by the time I came back again, it was already gone, but it was sitting there forever. Uh, and that particular figure, I think actually they have one or two, so I could have grabbed it. Yeah, I think when it was out, it was around $24 to $30. I think normally it's more expensive at GameStop. It used to be, I don't know now because I don't go to GameStop anymore. So it was around $29, $30, maybe $25. Now this is what's quite 50 bucks, almost 40 some dollars, $40. So it went up in price. Uh, but if you go to the aftermarket, you can find it for a hundred bucks or so. So, uh, or more, or more, but this is, I think my opinion, the best. I do like this line. I've been collecting. I have a lot of the figures except this one, uh, and others that I don't have, but this is one that in my opinion is probably the best that this is the one that I, I need to have two. one just to kind of put them on my display with other figures and one that I want to keep in the box because that box is just gold in my opinion, just to have it like that. So this is one that I need to, but yeah, sold out here. I'm sure they're going to have more. When the time comes when I, i'm sure that it's gonna be enough you can definitely go to hasbro pulse there is also sold out it sucks man it definitely sucks here you can see that sold out right away and of course as soon as this is the thing you know when this thing's you know come out they sell out but i'm sure they'll find it it was 30 40 dollars here too 39.99 you can go to walmart they may have it at walmart Oh, look at this <laughs> straight to the spider-man i was looking at it right, right there you see the price that they have it there for 108 bucks 108 dollars so yeah no yeah i'll find it i'll get it but you know it's kind of cool uh i i think that this is perhaps the, the best figure in the collection in my opinion is the best figure so far it goes so well. It's a great representation of the King Ping. I love the the portrait. It's so based on the cartoon, which I think is fantastic. You know, they I wish as they've been having success with the X-Men animated series. My hope is that they also continue with the Spider-Man animated series because I think it was as, as good as the X-Men. And in so many ways, better than the X-Men, in my opinion. I love the Spider-Man animated series more than I did the X-Men back in the day. Is, I think both are great. Uh, so uh, it is a fantastic one. Even with that portrait, with the angry portrait, 
the beaten one um that is really 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 cool so yeah i'm sorry um but just stay tuned i, I think uh, you have to kind of keep an eye on it's supposedly it's going to rise sometime in july so i'm thinking during the summertime you'll find it probably at walmart you'll find it at target maybe target has been carrying a lot of these so keep an eye on them they are coming back and now of course the pre-orders are sold out that doesn't mean that they're not i'm sure that they're gonna have stock when the time comes and they'll have it so keep an eye during that time if you wanna if you miss on that one this is the time to do it i'm definitely gonna come back and grab it and i'm sure they're gonna have more stock at hasbro pulse too so we'll see so this is where I want to talk about Marvel Legends today. Now that I'm here at Big Bad Toy Store, let me talk about a company, Haya Toys, which I normally don't really cover. But I, I definitely, when I saw this, this um, image, I was like, okay, I was impressed. Look at this one. First one I saw, it, I thought this was 3-0. Here we are here. The Walking Dead is exquisite. Super Daryl Dixon, 112 scale. This is... Uh, uh, PX exclusive action figure. So this is exclusive to previews. Uh, so this is something that you can even order through from your comic book shop. And, you know, well, so when I saw the first from the picture from there, I didn't look at the name of the company. I thought, oh, another figure by 3-0. Because 3-0 has been doing the, you know, the 1-6 scale figures. And they look fantastic in my opinion. Here you can see Rick Grimes and there's still some, some of them available. But, uh, you know, normally, as far as I knew, Hayatogs have the tiny little figures. Like, these figures, they're more, like, small. 118, that's $24.99, so it's $25. I'm not necessarily a fan of that. This is on the 112. So, this is going to be around 6 inches within the 6 inches range. A little bigger. It's going to be at the same scale of the, um, you know, the, what, Mesco does with their the 112 scale figures. And I'm so impressed because even the coat is there and i like this portrait it looks really fine that is a nice portrait it comes with really nice accessories and it looks like a 16l figure from 30 and you have different portraits as you can see different expressions uh, for 112 that is a very possible very good and i'm i'm telling you i'm not a fan of the show i never really care much about the walking dead i've read the comic book but i never really care much about the the, the show because he had really deviated so much from the what the comic book was but you know some people seem to like it. a lot of people got into it more than and they never read the comic book but I, that wasn't me but um looking at it the expression the 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 accessories the weapons that is a very cool figure as a 112 it's really nice if you really don't have the space for one six and you're running out and you need something small, you want to be looking into it. This is it's good to see that you know there's more companies doing one twelve stuff and not just the what you know the fully articulated one twelve, but the stuff that actually looks more premium. This is definitely looking very premium with the coat, with the clothing. That portrait looks really, really well done. Of course, this is a preview. This is a prototype. We don't know how the final product will be, but everything that comes with it from the base. From the different weapons, as you can see, the lever action uh, shotgun. Uh, and, you know, it's cool. Man, that looks cool. All the different weapons, arrows, hands, the bag, the hat. And that, is, that is very, very cool. And here you can see an idea of the scale. It's going to be around 6.2 inches tall, so it's not that big. 15 centimeters. So, uh, that is cool. $109. This is definitely what Hayatois is kind of doing now which is very cool high toys has been doing a lot of different things but definitely they're going into this market which i wish them luck i think they can do it also they've been doing a lot of the godzilla stuff uh but yeah this is something new look at all the godzilla stuff they've been doing definitely high toys is, is kind of going in a, a new direction trying to sell more premium stuff everything that they previously was on the the smaller scale, very tiny little figures, but now they're going into the more big, the bigger figures. So this is a new, new enterprise, a new start from them. Let's see how they do. Uh, time will tell. If they are, they have the quality, the ability to kind of keep up with other companies, like uh, you know, in this case, like Mesco or even Tree Zero. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. So this is what I want to talk about about Haya Toys. Now let me take you back to SciShow. Because I want to talk about another release for the uh, the Fallout series from 3.0. This is the T45 Hot Rod Shark Powder Armor. This is $430. We talked about it, the most recent armor that they produced too, which is I think is better than this one in my opinion. At least I like the motif. If I have to choose a all, I'd go for this one. But this is another cool one. And, you know, 
there's a lot of fans of Fallout, Fallout. There's a lot of lovers of this video game, the classic video game, the whole franchise from Bethesda. Um, I have played it, you know, I'm okay with it, you know, but I totally understand how people feel so passionate about Fallout. You know, I have it, you know, I have it, I have the games, you know, whether it's my PC, whether it's on my consoles, but, um, you know, I never really, it's hard for me to invest so much time into this, uh, you know, Western RPGs and, you know, you know, in this case, this is also, you know, first person shooter, but it's more of that adventure type, the, you know, discovering the world, the RPG elements, all of that. It looks cool though. I always like the armors and this armor looks fantastic. It's a very nice color. Now the portrait is very similar to the one they use from the other armors. I, I do like the design. It comes with all the different parts, a lot of different elements. So um, definitely there's a lot of fans out there you, uh, that love this and definitely will go get into it and this whole collection. I think this is perhaps one of the best series that is produced by 3-0, in my opinion, with the Fallout. This other series that they also produce over action figures are fantastic, but I think this is one of the ones that is doing really great and the figures have been great and popular. Very cool figure. Actually, I like the coloration and the design. You can see the browns and the greens. Very nice on the prototype. Very cool. Very nice with the weapons. And of course, you can remove parts, add parts. So there's a lot of things you can do with this one. Here are all the accessories. Very nice. I think this T45 is not a cheap figure, of course. This is for the hardcore Fallout fan. The one that has the ones to have this. Approximately 36, 8 inches tall for it. It's within the 112 scale. $430. Again, not for the 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 casual fan this is definitely for the heavy fan here you can see the the t51 nuka cola power armor if i have to choose between these two i'll go for the nuka cola that would be my favorite of the two but i'm sure that some people actually will go to having them all they want to have them all so we'll see how it goes with this uh hopefully also they they produce other things within the same franchise and not just recoloring uh you know the same model so we'll see so this is what Hiya Toys, uh, sorry, Hiya Toys, 3 zero is doing today, today. All right, let me drink some water, man. My mouth is so dry today. Wow. Maybe I didn't drink enough water today, and that's the reason why. All right, so here at SciShow, the next piece that I want to cover now, we in the action figures to the one six scale figures. Let me take you to the newest release that was done by Hot Toys. Let me see if we can find it here. Wow, I don't see it. Unless it's sold out. No, it's right there. Oh my God, I was already like, damn, these things are selling like hotcakes. The Armor Batman 2.0. This is the second variant, I guess. 2.0 uh there is a deluxe version there's a collector's edition and this is of course based on the batman v superman which in my opinion it's it's an okay movie and i know some people are gonna hate me for that because a lot of people think this is the best version at batfleck batfleck is the best batman ever i disagree um and i gotta tell you i'm necessarily a fan of the portrait you know to me Everything, you know, they've been doing fantastic portraits. You know, Hot Toys. Not necessarily with this one so much. It's like, I don't see Bat, you know, Batflick. I don't see Affleck there. I don't I don't see him. I do not see I don't know what they were thinking about. Maybe it's just, you know, they don't have the, the permit for the likeness with the actor. But I don't see it. I just don't see it. Now, of course, as you can see, come with separate rolling eyeballs. How much can you use that on armor like that? I'm not necessarily sure. And I, I don't think it's necessary there. Uh, you got the battle damage armor, of course. You got the LED kryptonite spear powered by USB, which is fantastic. I, it's great that they're doing that instead of just the batteries. Uh, the Dharma based display. And of course there. So, you know, the deluxe version, it's, it's as you can see, it's just as this. Now, from certain angles, I can see Batfleck. You know, from others, I don't. Maybe with the eyes like that, but just the mouth looks so different. 
looks like an extra actually wearing the armor and it's so damaged and i gotta be honest with you um it's cool for the ones that they want a variant but if they're gonna call this a deluxe i would have been nice if it was actually the figure with the you know with the battle damage but without the battle damage as well you know that you come with interchangeable parts that, like as you can see with the trees uh with the three zero uh, the 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 T85 that we saw that it can be you know have all the different parts that you can add on. It does have a light up feature here. I also I think in the eyes. Uh, and actually no, actually yeah, I can see that now that you have another portrait. So actually it does have interchangeable portraits. And look at this one. So it does have an interchangeable portrait. And it does have. Okay, I was thinking like man, it does. It seems like they're only promoting the the, the battle damage. Also oh, okay, so I was wrong. Sorry for that. <laughs> So yeah, it does come with the the parts. You know, it comes like you know without the damage or with the just partial damage before. Of course, he is beaten by Superman. Okay, so on that note, I can say my apologies. I can say okay, that is the way I see it. Um, but like I said again, I, I do not see Affleck in there. I just don't see it in the eyes. It's still kind of cool. If you miss out on the, I think the original they have. This one can be good. And definitely I like the fact that the the kryptonite it has the light up there. That is really a nice touch. It's not just a, you know, plastic, you know, doll thing. It looks good. The grappling gun. The interchangeable battle damage armor, which I see that now, which is great. Look at this one. It's been punch. You know, I haven't really watched that movie from a long, a long time. I watch it, you know, a good amount of times until I just say, you know what? It's all right. You know, I know a lot of people that love this film, love the series, but to me, it's like, okay, whatever. Uh, and in some ways I'm happy that it's over, you know, and uh, let's see what Don does now that he's in charge. We'll, we'll find out soon enough, but it has improved paint application and weathering effects. Uh, of course I don't have the original to compare to know if that's the case, but uh, yeah, it seems like it looks really neat. We'll see when the final product comes. Yeah, I would say the only complaint that I have with this, the whole deluxe version, exclusive, all the whole thing, is definitely the portrait. I don't see the actor. Um, you know, I do see it at times from some angles, maybe the eyes, but with the mouth and all, it doesn't seem like. So there's a couple of things where he doesn't look like, you know, Affleck. Um, it might be my impression. Some people might see it. The collector's edition, which is a regular, it's only 300. The other one is 370. I think for, you know, the money, you can buy the other one. The difference is very, uh, you know, $70 more. You can get so many different parts. Still, this one is a fantastic version. And uh, if you only want the armor suit, I think that will suffice. Definitely, I do. I do like that. Definitely. One thing I could say about... Um, Snyder's that he was able to always Sack is always able to kind of represent or bring the homage to the comic book. And of course he's doing this for the Arkham uh, Batman Returns, the Dark Knight Returns. And you can see the the armor, of course, is the design that was done, of course, by Frank Miller. And definitely he respected it and he honored it with the way he designed it. So that's one thing I could say about him as a Zack Snyder, as a visual director, he's one of the best. He definitely knows how to translate the pages into the uh, into the films that he produces uh so yeah that rebel moon i just watched I, I didn't review it here on the channel it's not the best movie it's fun to watch but visually it's stunning and i'm looking forward to the second part that is coming very 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 soon to look at it so i will tell you this i've always had great respect for Zack snyder visually as a director he's great but uh sometimes as the storytelling he's not that good um you know he's not that's not his forte but visually he can translate and create an image and i would say that the way he created his characters they look so close to the comic book i think they're superior for that sense to the counterparts of the marvel of the marvel of the mcu they are more vis they're visually closer to the the source material you know with the dc with Zack snyder stuff it's not reverse you know the mcu is fantastic story the storytelling is the big part of the mcu but not every character 
it resembles or it's really close to the source material. Not every, a few, maybe the Iron Man because the armors are easier to create. You know, you can kind of cover up, but the other characters, maybe Captain America has been close, but many of the characters don't really look like the counterparts, you know, you know, besides Hulk, of course, because Hulk is always the Hulk. Uh, so there are a couple of things there, you know, Thor maybe, but you know, it's not all as you see in the comics. That, that's what Zack Snyder does. And I think that Hot Toys is capturing that essence here very, very well with this figure. Uh, whether you go for just the armor, I think it's good. $300 is a great price just for the armor. If you want all the extra parts, you can do the interchanging of things, which I will tell you, it happens very rarely. Not everyone, you know, I have pieces that have a lot of different parts. I have Hot Toys figures that I rarely change parts. So I kind of like, okay, sometimes buying the deluxe version is not always the best idea because you always pick the, the, the one that you like the most visually and you technically put all this stuff away and you never use it. So yeah, that's something that you always have to take into consideration. All right. So my friends, uh, uh, thank you for watching. Uh, don't forget to leave a like also here and let me know if you're watching. Uh, appreciate it. So, okay. So this is technically uh, what we have uh very quick so we finished with the action figures which is great we're doing really good time let me drink some water and i want to take you back to sideshow and the reason we come into sideshow well, we actually we were at SciShow, so <laughs> we're in the same place that we started. I want to talk about a company that I definitely definitely don't talk much about. No, don't talk mu much about. But this is um, now we're going into moving from action figures, moving into statues. I want to talk about Mega House. Now, Mega House produces figures. Uh, there's one thing that sometimes people confuse what figures are. I, I notice that a lot. Sometimes people think the figures are just the the, the possible things, and no, those are articulated figures. A figure is a statue. A statue. Even people were thinking about the premium format figures. Say, why is it called a figure? Which is a statue. Figures are statues. Statues are figures. Figures are overall all sort of things. Statues technically is a word that we use mostly, but it was used mostly for big representations of things in stone. And of course, nowadays, of course, the statues come in all different sizes and all. Uh, they're still figures, uh, but the format is that the figure. The statue is mostly it's inanimated. It doesn't have interchange, you know, it doesn't really move. Although we have added, you know, switch up parts and all that, which is kind of making they're technically hybrids now. Uh, but then you have the articulated figures, which is in you know, the things that you can pose and all of that. So, but at the end of the day, they're all figures, no matter what. Even the statues are figures, and there are figurines, which are technically smaller size figures or smaller size statues. So I will tell you that Mega House produces, as a company, they have produced a lot of figures over the years. They're known in the market for primarily for the stuff they do for animation, for anime, for manga. And uh, they have a couple of releases, of course, now Saishu, uh, as we saw, they're doing the machinations, they're doing so many different companies. So they are doing Mega House. And one of the things that it really struck my eye, the first thing that I saw is this Royal Army Tank Corpse number 104. This is, of course, um, from the Sandland. Sandland is just, um, is this in that the video game? I think it's a... Uh, uh, if I'm not mistaken, it's a, it's, it, there's an upcoming video that is coming, really. And it was the design was done by Toriyama, who passed away just recently. Uh, and, um, and believe me, I do not I do not know much about Sandland. Uh, although I love Toriyama, it doesn't mean that I kind of follow everything he ever did. But uh, Sandland is, uh, as far as I know, it actually, it's a manga series. Um, but I know that there is an upcoming game, and I saw some footage recently about it now sandland is something that, you know as much as i love toriyama i didn't follow everything he ever did uh, as i mentioned i didn't i post primarily i love his of course the dragon ball that was the biggest thing that i always remember uh i do like uh Arale. i always like Arale. it was my favorite i still to this day one of my favorite manga to read uh very classic which technically the what the many inspired a lot of the things that happened afterwards at dragon ball and of course, I loved some of the games that he did, some of those RPG stuff. But Sandlands is something that I do not know much. But yeah, I know there's an upcoming game. People are excited for it. Now, this statue represents um, 
much of it, which I, again, I do not know much about Sandland because I do not follow it, but this, I'm going to read some of the stuff here. So I have an idea of this one. This is a tank. It, it was really surprising when I saw it. Sandland joins the desktop real McCoy exclusive series, uh, collection of figures that bring the unforgettable illustrations of manga and its covers art to life. Uh, Belzebu, Teeth, and Rao have been sculpted charging through deserted landscape in the tank capture in a dynamic large model that stands approximately 150 millimeters tall exclude including the base which is very very tiny the tank itself features fantastic detail from the casting and wielding marks to the signs of battle such as damage rust and even the intricacies of the bowl shapes uh and meticulously crafted to bring the adventure spirit of sandland into your anime collection now looking at this one I will tell you, it looks kind of cool. I like the base and this the the sand that is done there. Look at this one. It's I love the level of detail. And as far as I know, this is made out of PVC. But it looks really cool. And definitely the nice detail inside. And the detail in the back is very, very cool. This is a very nice little figure, not really that big. Let me kind of give you an idea. Let's see Sandland video game. I saw that there is a game right now. I think it's already out. Actually. Yeah, this is the game. Oh, this is still it's coming. I know it's coming right now. Uh, it's going to release like here on April 25th on the PlayStation 5, PlayStation 4. You can pre-purchase that also through Steam. So this is the new video game that is coming. So of course it's going they're going to sell it, but that gives you an idea of this video game. And normally this is not my gaming channel, but it's kind of cool. And of course, based for the creator of Dragon Ball Akira Toriyama. So they the whole thing. I don't know exactly. I saw the trailer recently. Um again, it's an RPG. And we'll see an action RPG. So we'll see how that goes. But it's looking really, really terrific, in my opinion. And I'm definitely going to get it here on Steam. Now you're looking at my pitch on Steam. <laughs> I just spend a lot of times here uh, going through the sales all the time. So really looking forward to this game. And I'm definitely going to add it. So yeah, it's kind of cool. Again, this is something that is being released for them. I think I love the detail. It's not a big one. It doesn't, I would say, break the bank. It, well, the price is 285 I think it's mostly because of the detail with this figure and some people might disagree with that but i i think that it's, it's really really cool now with the materials that they're using here let's see what it says it's abs a pvc as i mentioned pvc and some abs elements but technically all the same uh so that's kind of cool now it's not the only thing that mega house is releasing this week and it's available at sideshow uh may have released a lot of things but this is the stuff that sideshow is selling right now they also have this nami uh, from one piece this is the uh, the you know bathing beauty I think line or something that's called 20th anniversary version. This is uh, an a version. Uh, this is a line, particular line that they're doing. Of course, May House has been selling these figures for a long, long time. So this is on the sexy look, as you can see, uh, around five, six inches tall. It's not that tall of a figure. This is a re-release with a recolor. This figure has come out before. It's been very popular. If you're into very sexy looking figurines like this then definitely this is one and not you know she's always been popular you know <laughs> she's always been very popular because of that um and again this is not for you can see 20th anniversary i think it's kind of i was thinking 20th anniversary is are they talking about maybe a part of the series because i know that the original series started back in 1997 uh that's when uh the the manga or unless they're talking about the tv show uh, that could be so it's the 20th anniversary because i know the, the it was serialized in in the anime the the manga started 1997 so maybe this is what they're talking about so it was it wouldn't be 20 years it would be more than that uh so maybe they're talking about the tv show itself the series or the animation who knows or part of the animation but um maybe i, I read some of the details there but here for fans of one piece and those who love this type of figures Definitely, this is a one that it would be hard to display here in the house. <laughs> Unless I want to be the word, and I don't want that. 
uh, but it's $155. Let's see. The ever popular uh, POP One Piece series is celebrating its 20th anniversary. And to commemorate the occasion, we are releasing NAMI version BBSP from the version BB Bathing Beauty series in a limited edition color. Uh, the color scheme for this product was decided by the fans during a special 20th anniversary voting project. NAMI's well received sculpt quality and dazzling smile are stunning as ever, capturing the beauty uh, growth over two years with an outfit inspired by the uh, one Nomi wore at the time of the Straw Hat Cruise reunion. Uh, filled with charm befitting the, the anniversary year, the figure features a bikini look that brings out all the NAMI's qualities. <laughs> yeah, whatever. Along with a mug that incorporates the Pop 20th anniversary logo and stands out as the unique piece from the previous edition. Now, what is the Pop 20th anniversary? Now I'm, I'm like I'm 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 curious. So let's see what is actually they're celebrating here. Pop One Piece 20th anniversary. Now that you're actually picking my attention, and it's not One Piece Funko. Okay, May House One Piece Pop Limited Monkey. Okay, so it's the line itself that we're talking about. So it's the 20th anniversary of this line. Is the Pop Series. Okay, so it is actually the series by Mega House. It's serving the 20th anniversary. They've been producing these figures for a long time, as far as I know. So that's what it is. So they're technically celebrating the 20th anniversary. There was a voting system. And... Oh no. Here, here. May House official. Yeah. Oh, this is Twitter. Okay. As one of the pop 20 anniversary events, we have started to conduct resale pop surveys. You can vote one time per day and please vote for your favorite pop from 20 figurines with your maximum love. Okay, so this is their line they have produced over the years, and they are re releasing a lot of those figures over the years. Uh, the best figures that the people love and they're re-releasing again as I mentioned earlier in the video the companies are doing a lot of re-releases so they're releasing a lot of the figures in these lines with new recolorings and changes and things like that so new ver variants of those is all it is so 20 years of mega house producing that so yeah if you're into this very cool actually i like the design i like the 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 colors in this variant version i think i've seen the original somewhere so that's an idea now uh, talking about also mega house let me kind of show you another one that they have this week and it was edward and alphonse elric uh this two brothers set of course this is from the full metal alchemist 15 anniversary repeat this figure it's a re-release of some the this figure has been they already released it years ago i'm not sure if they're actually celebrating the 15th anniversary of it but here's a sideshow and mega house uh, present the edward alphonse elric brotherhood set uh, 15th anniversary repeat in celebration of the 15th anniversary of the uh, gem series we are re-releasing the precious gem series from the of the full metal alchemist brotherhood eric brotherhood's uh, set capturing the main characters edward and alphonse El elric performing one of their iconic joint attacks here this is a as far as i know scale wise it could be it's 12 inches so it could be a 1 7 scale as far as i know could be i like this one you know, other than that, you can go for the one by Prime One Studio that there is a one six scale. That is a magnificent statue, but very expensive. Or you can go from the ones that even um, uh, First for Figures release with. Uh, but those are big. But this, I like it. It's also PVC ABS. It has a light up feature. I think it's a really nice depiction of the brothers. Very cool. very nice detail again this is a re-release if i'm not mistaken of one that came before it and it looks really cool so uh very nice 12 inches you know it's within it's, it has a pretty good height and on the details on this one abs pbs uh almost 12 inches tall of course, they're crouching, as you can see. They're not that big, so it could be even one tenth scale. And one on top of the other. Uh, and, of course, uh, for $335, I think it's kind of cool. It, it's probably the, of all the stuff that releases, the stuff that they have releasing, it's kind of cool to see that. And, again, Saishu's doing a lot of the Mega House stuff now. If you go here at Saishu and look at all the stuff that they're selling with Mega House, you can see there's a big variety of things of statues, 
uh, statues of all different types, of course, anything that has to do with animation. You see uh, a lot of stuff here, for example, from a Naruto. Uh, you see also uh, here you can see Spike and Faye. That is actually pretty cool. Um, Cowboy Bebop. Uh, so you see so many different things, anime, uh, different um, pieces and uh, and things and figures of different scales, particularly mostly on the smaller scale. But a lot of cool, cool looking stuff. Motoko Kusanagi right there. That's very cool. So, oh, this one also is very cool. This is on the wait list. So you can see th there's not like a lot of stuff that they're doing here, but definitely it's Aisha now, of course, carrying a lot of these new things. And this uh, is something that we're going to see more. And it's kind of cool. And it's nice to see Saisho actually selling these things and also going into this market because there's definitely. Uh, a uh, market for it whether you like the demon slayer stuff here or any other of these franchises uh, definitely there's this is even dragon ball stuff here look at this one this is kind of cool so there's a lot of things here that we're going to to see moving forward from scishow now this year in this so that is that is very 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 cool all right my friends oh wow we're doing pretty good time today so now talking about um I'm thinking if to take a break, a quick break, uh, and come back. I think that's what we're going to do. But um, I want to say to all of you, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna take a uh, take a quick break, and uh, I'm coming back. And of course, and uh, when I come back, uh, we're gonna cover Prime One Studio. We're gonna talk about Prime One Studio. We're gonna talk about PCS, McFarlane Toys, Kotobukiya. Uh, Rear Studio, Blissway, Divine Statue, Sideshow, Infinity Studio, J and D, and NECA. So definitely, we have still some some uh, place to go, uh, you know, some time to go. Uh, and uh, but stay tuned. Uh, when I get back, we'll we'll cover some of these things. But thank you, thank you for your support. I'll see you in just a moment.
All right, we're back. Thank you for um, waiting a little bit while I was away, a few minutes away. Um, definitely, we are now getting. Um, we're gonna continue on, of course. The night's kind of fresh, which is good. Um, I'm not sure how you all feeling. Everybody's a bit quiet. I guess everybody's doing something or something. Or I'm getting, or I'm boring you with all the figure stuff. I know many of you are more statue collectors, but yeah, I still like to cover action figures because hey, I'm a big fan of action figures and uh, You know, I'm a collector of so many things and I love to collect things and I love to talk about these things You know, it's, I'm so passionate about pop culture stuff and um, it's just it's just my nature and I cannot change my nature um, Some people can concentrate on one thing. I cannot concentrate on a lot of things. You know, it's just my 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 personality all right, my friends, I want to cover, uh, as we come back, let's go into the statues. I want to take you to, um, I want to take you to Prime One Studio. Yeah, this is also available as SciShow. They've been carrying, of course, uh, you know, mentioned about Prime One Studio, of course, the next level showcase um, there. There's a lot of expectation. But right now, um, the thing that they released this week is this Velociraptor. This is uh, open mouth limited edition Velociraptor one thin scale. This is for the prime collectible figures that, you know, it seems like it's still going, which is the PVC stuff. Uh, this is $130. If you go there, you can also order it through SciShow, as you can see. But looking at this one, um, it's very cool and I like it, you know, because of course, you know, uh, Prime One Studio, they offer the more high end expensive stuff that barely a few people that I know can afford. But, you know, some collectors, a lot of collectors can afford, but, you know, not necessarily many people. So they also they they tackle the market by producing something that is more on the affordable side. And I think it's still high quality, uh, even though it's like PVC, I still it looks great. These figures look fantastic. And I think if you are building a collection of dinosaurs from Jurassic Park, but you don't have the money to break the bank and you know, maybe you're, you've been collecting the Mattel figures or all the other figures that have been produced over the years, even Hasbro has produced figures that come and go. And sometimes they're not so great and they disappear hard to come by. And they seem like the line goes up. At least you can choose this, you know, you pay a little more than you pay with an action figure. But you're still getting something that is a statue that okay great quality that looks so fantastic on display something that is really um and it's prime one studio at the other day it's produced by prime one studio which has and you know has weight just the name and it looks good in my opinion that's a 110 so it does have a little bit of a scale so it's, it's a nice scale and it looks really really nice the paint job and this is prototype is really fantastic here's the other version with the closed mouth so you want to have two to display and this others look at this one <laughs> so they have the three variants i think the one that jumping is kind of cool although it's not necessarily so cool with that little thing in the middle of his butt but um you get the idea you can collect the three of them uh, i do like the one with the open mouth and even the one with the closed mouth um uh, that is really really cool so then again there is a nice thing this collection Seems to be very popular. The whole thing that we see now with good prime collectibles figures, you can see they are really going in that direction. One thing I can say that there's a lot of things that I'm anticipating on this uh, upcoming. Ruts holding up statues are often weird for me. <laughs> yes, it, it, it's, it's, it's one thing. I like it when companies actually like here, I, I like it when companies find a way to make it invisible or they put something at the bottom where actually they sustain it with a rod and, you know, and you don't see that effect. I, I just hate it when the effect is so visual that it breaks the breaks the reality. Because this is the thing, when you look at statues, one of the things about statues, they're not posable. When you post, a, you know, something, then you can kind of put different things. But, uh, you know, you can move things, you can play with things. But with statues, it's more about visualize something like in real life, or at least you bring it into um, into reality, something that you see on an image, on a still, or in a photograph, or on a comic book. So you bring into life something in 3D form. So you don't want to break the the effect 
that is causing by having something that is so artificial and i feel the rots are so artificial and i hate when companies do it where there isn't statues uh superman flying and has a rod or where there is anything that has a rod that is holding something i i found it to be so cheap the effect and i know some people can be okay without it just breaks the thing you know to me it doesn't look good it just looks cheap it's like they they have no other way there's other ways that they could create this effect without having to do that you know i don't know there's so many different ways that you can create the effect without having that that's a cheap way to do it so i would say that that is perhaps and i like the the the, the, the sculpt is nice but that rod is just up his butt is just not, not a good view but you can see the other figures that they're producing and again i think one thing that i can say now that i have you here now that we are here at this moment uh, and we're seeing all the the, the 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 stuff that they've been selling for this. So technically, they've been selling the Jurassic Park stuff. They've been selling also the Minions uh, under the PVC ABS stuff, which is the cheaper thing. Also, they're starting now to produce this Harry Potter PVC stuff. You know, so they're going in that direction. And I was looking at Prime One Studio. Now, really talking about the upcoming event and see what to expect. Really, I do see that they are. Uh, I'm anticipating that we're going to see more of those here. You can see, for example, at the bottom now in our products, I noticed that I went to the website. It showed, it says prime one studio. When you click on that, nothing is found. It says back home. So there is nothing, it, you know, so it seems to me that they are actually, they're going to separate lines. Now everything was kind of meshed together, but now they're going into lines where they are, are going to make clear distinctions about the products they sell. So where there is Prime One Studio, uh, Prime One st One Statue, as they're gonna call it, I, I guess they wanna call Prime One Studio the whole company, but Prime One Studio is gonna be their statue division, I suppose. The Prisma Wing is something that they're also been promoting, which is PVC, also hybrid bases and stuff, PVC and also polystone or whatever resin, and it's mostly based on franchises in Japan. So this is gonna be more high end quality pvc stuff a little more on the pricey side so they're doing a lot of this is technically mostly for the japanese market but i'm sure there's you know there's a fascination worldwide about a lot of this type of figures as we we talk about mega house we talk about all these companies producing this type of things in the past so i think they're also going to really put more emphasis into those things and we're gonna see more on the medium size on the medium price point going from the expensive to the medium price point we're going to see more of that that's the reason why they are separating this a product line we also have the cutie one which you know something that they it's it's been kind of something that they since last year they've been promoting a lot this is definitely more on the pump you know the what is that the 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 stuff that they sell the pop stuff that they sell i just don't remember it's kind of crazy they're like oh kind of look like look at this one the matrix reloaded so i think that they're going to do more of that um we're gonna see a lot more you can see the different lines these are very affordable sets and definitely this is for a peculiar more young market young people that like this kind of thing uh, so it's QD1, something that they've been promoting for the last two years. It seems that they going in that direction. We talk about the Prime Collectibles figures, which is definitely the more the cheaper side of things in the sense of statues, more on the affordable PVC ABS size uh, side. And uh, I think we're going to see more than this, more than just the Jurassic Park, more of the Minions. We'll see that they're going that on the more affordable prices. Also for this, we're going to see more of those franchises, more of the Western franchises actually under the prime collectible figures line. So I think that there's, I have the impression that we're going to see a lot more. I don't know exactly what is the franchises they want. They're going to release uh, the title of the whole event. Maybe see, we can see it at the top. Now they've been promoting it as you know, monsters and heroes, something like that. So definitely there's going to be an emphasis on a lot of monster stuff. And of course, this year we've seen a lot of Godzilla stuff. So definitely we're going to probably see Godzilla stuff, a lot of, you know, other franchises. They've been doing a lot of that. And definitely all on the hero side, a lot of the DC stuff. It would be nice if they actually start going in, in route with other things besides just the DC stuff. It would be nice if we're, they're able to dive into other hero franchises. Um, I don't know. There's a lot of anticipation on what they're going to, to showcase uh, next week.
Yeah, Prime One really is trying to diversify. Yeah, I think so too, uh, Decoria. I think that um, I think it's necessary. I think they need to, um, unless they they want to just be known as the high end type of market. And you know, the market is getting crowded with so many companies selling high end stuff. Whether J and D, we have Infinity Studio, we have uh, Queen Studio. So so there's a lot of companies selling high end stuff. And I think they, what the companies are trying to do is to, you know, I think they, 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 the smart approach for, for this, for them, is to, uh, and as, as producers, because that's what they are, they're manufacturers, they're manufacturing their own lines. I think the right approach for them is to start selling or to getting into different lines, but also different price points for different markets. And I think that's where the success can be. Of course, SciShow has gone into, they've been selling, this year has been fantastic. SciShow has been releasing a lot of stuff every week for their own line, but also they're distributing for other companies. Prime One is not a distributor, they're producers. Uh, so I think that that's where SciShow is going. And I think there's ample market for them to sell for other people. As long as they have license in America, they're going to keep selling. But for Prime One Studio as a producer, the best solution, unless they want to become distributors, is something that Iron Studio is already doing in, in, in Brazil. They're distributing for other companies in Brazil. Uh, and also, the, besides the, what they're selling on their side, and they're going into the route, they're following SciShow mostly, that route of the, the, the business approach that SciShow has, but um, in Brazil, of course. And I think with Prime One Studio, uh, there's a lot of heavy competition in Japan of producers. There's so many companies doing, but there is a big market for figurines. There's a big market for anime stuff. And um, size matters too, you know, in the sense that they produce a lot of one stuff that sells internationally, but the biggest market is in Japan. And I think people are looking for more affordable collectibles you know, particularly Japan is a very, it's a small country, you know, with so many people and the space is at a premium. So I'm, I'm sure if we have a problem here in America, where we have more space and collectors have big rooms to collect and to have this place, mostly not everyone, but Japan has even a harder, they have a harder time in Asia and a lot of countries in Asia, which is the biggest market that Prime One Studio has. So yeah, there's a lot to uh, to consider there. And I think diversifying is a good thing. How they're going to do it, what kind of surprises they have, it all depends on what they do. I think that there's room for that. I think there's room for high-end stuff, even on their smaller scale. And uh, I, I think a happy medium with the prices I think they can do it and I think they can as long as they have the stamp of their name on it and the quality that they already have with the high end stuff. I think people are going to buy it. People are receptive to that idea. So we'll see what happens. This is my two cents about what I think about what we're going to see. I don't know what to expect really, but there's I think there's a lot in the line for Prime One Studio on this one that I think they we're gonna see big surprises. Uh, there's gonna be a lot of talks uh, the following week, that week and the weekend, of course, in reference to it. Um too bad that I'm not gonna be here to really talk about it. But I'm definitely going to be watching and definitely I'm going to uh, when I get the opportunity, I'm going to share my opinion about the whole event, what I think about it. So we'll see. We'll see when the time comes. All right. Time for us to move up. And for that, um, moving on. Let's go back to SciShow. No, actually, no. I want to cover um, PCS. And for that, I'm going to take you to Premium Collectible Studio. Let me take you there. And the reason why we come to PCS, Premium Collectible Studio, you can come to SciShow, you can find it there or any other place. Uh, look at the stuff they have. There's a lot of different pre-orders. And there's some really upcoming stuff. Uh, the power lift ca lifting cam is coming very soon. We're going to look at that when the time comes and when it comes out. This juggernaut that just came out, this is $225. I was, I think it's a fair price because of the sheer size of this fella. This is not a tiny little figure. It's, even as a 110, it has some dimension here. Look at this is going, it's a 110, of course, the, the Marvel versus Capcom series. Of course, if you have been playing Marvel versus Capcom, you know this high, it, the way he they, is presented in the video game is huge. So definitely, I think they respect the source material. Uh, in my opinion, it looks fantastic. If you order directly from a PCS, you get the 10% discount early pre order gift, uh, additionally, the 12 dollar five percent back in pieces loyalty points when it's sh item ships which is always cool here you can see i love what they did with this this guy you know it looks 
perfect. It looks animated. It looks cartoony. It looks like the video game. Is it a hundred percent like the video game? I wouldn't say not so much. I think in the portrait, maybe yes, maybe no, but I'm in love with it regardless, regardless. This is, I love it, you know, and I have a lot of juggernaut figures in the one six scale. Um, of course I have the Bowen still after so many years, the action juggernaut. I love that one. I love the Kotobukiya that I had even had a video years ago where I compare them both side by side. Uh, the, the quality of, of course the, that Bowen won by a fraction because of the quality of the paint job, but the sculpt by Eric Sosa was terrific on the Kotobukiya. Uh, but of course, you know, Code of back in the day, the paint jobs were not, you know, they were close, but not too close. They they tried to get close to Bowen, but it never really matched Bowen style or Bowen uh, quality uh, and when it came about paint. I think this is perhaps becoming one of my favorite Juggernauts. I even like it more, this Juggernaut, than the Juggernaut that was just released. Um, the pre-order, uh, the Wolverine versus... Uh, the, the Juggernaut versus Wolverine 110 scale statue that was just released by, and we talk about it. Um, I don't know if it was last week or the week before by uh, Iron Studios, which I think is great, but I think this is better. I love this one a lot more. It is in a standing pose, very Jim Lee-esque style. Look at those hands. Man, he's ready to bring, he's ready to pound. It looks amazing. It's just great. Of course, they've been the other in this line. You know, of course, we have Wolverine. We have, uh, you know, they've been releasing the Saber too. We talked about it recently. That looks fantastic as well. But look at this. It's nine inches in height, which is a 110. Don't expect this to be 12 inches. But, you know, it's three inches shorter than a, an average 112. But the sheer size, you know, it's 11.5 inches width. It is wide. It's a very wide piece because of those huge arms. And the depth is 10 inches. It's just a stocky fella. It's, you know, even though he's a huge fella, but still feels stocky the way he's crouching there. Man, it's just, it just, I, I love it. I, I just love this statue. And I think the price is where it's supposed to be. And also people will say, oh, it's a 110, so it doesn't deserve to be this price. I don't, you know, some people are conflicted about it. You know, I don't really look at, at that. I look at the scale, the size, and everything that goes alongside it. I think it's fantastic. They're going for the basic thing. Um, I'm okay with it. It doesn't have to hit, tell a story. I think, you know, this is the thing for me for basis. There's two ways that I, I understand basis. Uh, or you put detail in the base that tells a story, but if you don't do it well, then might as well just give you a simple base and I'm okay with that. And I, you know, that's the thing with some companies. Like I, I, that was my beef with go to Wikia basis that instead of giving you a, a story and now sometimes with the bases sometimes you got a simple plain rocky terrain type of thing that even didn't look right didn't have the best quality and i felt like okay if you're gonna mess it up like that if, if, if it doesn't really tell a great story if it doesn't really even match every other thing that they have just give me the plain black base and that's it and i think pre cs historically has ever done that they did that with street fighter for many years they had to continue to do so and as you can see right now they're doing it with this journal with this collection the marvel vs captain collection and i think it looks good the paint job is excellent the angle is super cool this is a fun piece you know i was even tempted recently they have the juggernaut that came out from uh mondo and i and ultimately i didn't get with that whole vinyl thing and i was thinking man that looks kind of cool but at the same time i'm not so sure about it you know i i i am happy that i waited um because i this is the one i think that i'd rather have although you know that vinyl piece is big and all it's kind of great um but at the same time, it has very limited mobility. And in my mind, I'm thinking, is it a statue? Is it a figure? Or you can just rotate the arms. I'm not so sure. I'd rather have this. It just has a very simple pose, a simple, great pose. And that's about it. You don't need anything else. It looks great. And I'm hope you know, my hope is that the prototype comes out as good uh, with the paint job. And I love that they went with the, this colors. It still has a little bit um, even better colors than in the game. They went for the more classic brownish and reddish so that kind of tells me that we may even see a variant at some point with a different coloration different scheme they were more with the comic book rather than the 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 the, the game because of the brown is a little more brownish uh than in the game which is more reddish uh so um I, i'm i'm happy i think it's a really nice 
touch as you can see with this collection here you can see other pieces that have released that saber tour is a killer looks fantastic look at the the you have the wolverine they have the different version this is the x uh force version you got the spider-man the black version this line is great look at that you know with the marvel stuff here you can see Now Juggernaut in the line, Tober to the you got the classic Saber Tooth if you go, or the Jim Lee Saber Tooth. Of course, they got the one third scale stuff. But look at those Spider-Man, the different ones. I, I go for the classic and the black one more than the no the classic. I go for the, the classic video game with the big open eyes as the video game, even the black version. This with the classic eyes, not necessarily a big fan. I do like the three different versions of Wolverine, the brown, the Jim Lee, the, you know, the yellow, the tiger stripes. And of course you got the X-Force version. They look terrific. Um, so man, I'm telling you, this collection is killing it. Uh, what else is going to come from this collection, from this 110 collection? Of course, you know, there's so many characters. Colossus, that would be fantastic. I, this is one thing that I, I'll tell you this. It's exciting to see. I haven't been excited for to see Marvel stuff like this for a while, you know, like in the smaller scale. Since I would say, you know, Kodobuki, I really kind of like, I haven't really, we haven't had 1-6 scale. And I hope that one day we can get to go back to 1-6 scale. But as a 110, you know, the Iron Studios stuff is fine. But I think this is better because it's representing, it's not deviating, it's not doing their own thing. They actually respect the source material and they look so 90s to me uh, and so the video game and I'm just all for it. So yeah, definitely. I'm excited for that Marvel collection 110. Perfect for me. Perfect size. So really looking forward for more of that. So yeah, starting times. This is what we have to cover with premium collectibles today. Now, let me take you to one of the big things tonight. That definitely, uh, I have a lot to share with this one. And I'm going to take you to McFarlane Toys. Uh, McFarlane Toys, McFarlane Toys Store. Actually, McFarlane Store. And this is what's the biggest thing this week. And as soon as it was announced, I was all for it. I'm ready to go with it. Uh, and um, it was not a happy, happy story. Now, McFarlane, they have this new pose figure bundles. It's kind of, kind of mini statuesque type of figures. The Matrix, they, they're okay. I think they're all right. Trinity looks better than actually Neo. Neo <laughs> weird, looks weird. But the reason here, of course, you know, the, the McFarlane toys celebrating the 30th anniversary as a company. Uh, I think they have the right to celebrate even more than Sideshow because, you know, he's actually been producing figures since then, nonstop. Uh, Sideshow, they started as a designer company that actually did the did, did designs for McFarlane initially and from others, but they necessarily started selling products to later, later down the road. You know, I would say the first figures they started selling is really late 90s, maybe, or the early 2000s. That's when you start seeing their figures, but it was not in the mid 90s. So, um, yeah, I think that's a little bit of misinformation. Now, let's go to the Collectors Club. I will tell you this. I am very, it's a sign up for, you know, uh, collector's club. Okay. Get started. This is part of the collector's club thing. Let me see. We can get the thing, man. I'm just having some issues here trying to find this stuff. So they have this, unless they already removed it, which I want to talk about the Batman and um spawn figure let's see if we can go back and see it unless they removed that it. it was there this morning all right let's see pre-orders what the heck seems like they just remove it what the heck let me do some work while i'm doing this Spawn figures sold out. Everything sold out there. Wow. I think that they removed the whole thing here. I wanted to see that. Uh, they should address. Man, this is not good. Okay. Let's see.
Oh no. Okay. Maybe we can get the link and take us where we need to go. Maybe see her. This is the statue I want to cover right now. These are the photos, but let me see if we can take you to... Maybe they have the link. And if we can find the link. If not, I go to Facebook and on Facebook... um, Yeah, let's go to Facebook. Uh, we're going to look at that on Facebook. So uh, let's see the page still open. It should be. Okay, right there. All the major stuff. I love the majors, but I'm not necessarily thinking that that is. All right there. Thank you. This part of Batman statue was fully funded in under 20 minutes, which means it has been green lit for production. Uh, contribution remain open so you can reserve your statue as well as we, we will produce a, a 500. There is still time. Okay. If for some reason we don't get there to the drawing board, then of course we'll come back here and look at these pages. All right, my Farland toys drawing board. Okay, so a little bit of slowdown. So bear with me. Okay, okay, this is the thing. This is the thing. It it it, re it was supposed to be 500, and they have like a plenty of time for this one. They call it collector's club drawing board. This is a new turning concept into reality. So these are the images. Um, this is a cover that it's very very popular. And to give you an idea of this cover, of course, this is. Um, let me kind of show you an idea where this was taken from. For those you know, you have seen the cover. You probably have seen the image somewhere. But just to give you an idea, this is the this is the recent uh, Batman. Uh, you might lose some stuff because of the green colors there uh, and of course the the green background taking some of that but this is the the recently we got the batman spawn the deluxe edition that just came out um it has all the different collection it's not big because there hasn't been that many issues or particular uh team ups between batman and uh mcfar uh, and todd i'm sorry todd spawn but here, this is the different variation of that cover. There's two covers, actually. This is one with Batman is at the bottom. And here you can see uh, Spawn is on the top. Or, or you can go... I love this little book. You, I recommend you can find it. Uh, you can find it at the comic book shops or whatever. Let me see if I can find the other cover to show you. It, it's a, This book has a collection of all the team-ups that they have done so far over the years. Um... Uh, but this particular issue was 1994, written by Frank Miller. The art was Tuck McFarlane. Let me see if I can find it here. Because there's here a story from Greg Capullo. There's different team-ups. Okay, this is the one. I don't know. I'm looking for it. I, I try to give you some visual reference as always. You know, it's, it's not always, it doesn't always work that great, but at least I try. At least you can say that I'm giving you content, value content, instead of just kind of showing my opinion here. Okay, here's the other one. Here's the one that technically we're bait the statue's base from. You can see. All right, so that's, here you go. You already have that. I recommend this book. You need to grab it. Okay. So what they're doing here, they're basing that, of course. They're basing on this, and they created this big, huge 110 scale statue with such a huge base. And I got to be honest, it looks really, really great. Now, looking at the video here. Here, you can see this is was the, the, the video that they used to showcases. Um, and I do like the video. As an exclusive statue, McFarlane Toys has been doing statues before. Uh, they have done crowdfunding. The recent figure that they did that crowdfunding they made a lot of money. So they decided to kind of go on the same route and recreate this statue. 
And I'm telling you, this statue is awesome. It really represents the art of that cover. Very faithfully, in my opinion. It has does a fantastic job with it. I think it's such a masterpiece of a statue. When it was showcased, when I we saw that, I was like, okay. When I saw the video, I think I saw the, the video on, uh, on Insta, in Instagram. And uh, I was like, okay, this is it. This is the statue that I need to own this year. Or one that I need to add. 24 inches tall. It's pretty tall. It's a 110 scale statue. It is that tall because of the base and because, of course, of the poses. Here in the background, you can see some of the stuff that they're doing with DC. Of course, they took the mantle with DC collectibles after they went defunct. You know, they went, they closed doors. Now, of course, McFarlane is doing it. So um, this cover definitely is iconic. And that's the book that I was telling you, <laughs> at least from they got it and they represented there. So, man, I was like, okay, the day when they said the announcement on the weekend, I said, this is coming. I said, this is it. I am grabbing this no matter what. I'm going to pick it up. I'm going to add it to the collection because I'm a big fan of Spawn and Batman, of course. So this needs to come. Um, and here you can see. Now, let me see one more. Thing. Okay, so they already removed some of the stuff there um, of the price. Which is a shame, man, that they'd remove it. I didn't get the opportunity to talk about it when the time came. Um, yeah. Yeah, looking at it, they already removed the tears. Everything that was there, everything has been removed, which sucks that they did it so soon. They didn't have enough time. But this is what I want to say. Um, let me go back to Facebook so I can show you the pictures. Right here, we're going to see him better. It's very nice. The whole concept with this is very, very nice. I love the, the you know, this case, the cape. Of course, he has the very classic spawn drape it, you know, drapes. <laughs> it's a drapes. It really is a big cape. It looks so good. And the change and the face. And definitely they, uh, the, 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 the sculptor really respected Todd McFarlane's footboard face. On that statue, it looks like they they pretty much they profile the angle, even the Batman position, all of that. It's so it's such a fantastic looking piece. Even the portrait is so McFarlane on that Batman. If you read that comic book that I show you, uh, the book, you you'll see the art is just the same. The artist here, I don't know who is the artist. Whoever was involved in this did a masterpiece. This is a masterpiece of a of a statue. It's so great. And uh, look at that. All the different pictures and the different angles. This is like, I was like, man, this is it for me. You know, like I said, this is like an answer to a prayer. I've been wanting to have one statue like this for a very, very long time. Like you know, this, this particular cover. A, it is not the first time, though, that we have seen a statue from this now let me kind of take you because we don't see anything else we're going to go to um uh, let me go to instagram and i'm going to instagram because there's another video that we have seen this is small video right here i think this is the one Oh, this one. This is the video. I think this is the one we just saw on Instagram. Let me look at this one first. I don't know. You can see. I think this is the same video, perhaps. We're going to look at it. I think it's the same. Yeah, it's the same video. Let's see if we can see the original teaser. This is the one. This was the first uh, look. And here you can see the painter. I think it's when you can see someone painting the statue. So I'm, I'm, I'm really looking. Hopefully this story. here you can see this is the teaser. You can see the prototype. You can see that huge base, which grips a lot of height brings the height to the statue um the, i like that the, the using the capes technically to sustain batman on top of that so 
in that connection and that that's how they it, well we're talking about the thing about that little you know rod visible rod that is just so tacky the way they approach this is by actually using the cape as the you know the the sustaining point and that is such a clever way to represent something so it is so clever the painter there and that prototype has done a fantastic i don't know who the painter is he doesn't really say but look at the way he's painting doing this and the, the detail even that body and the form the shape and all that it's a really nice looking statue for sure very nice prototype so yeah i saw the teaser i was all in for this ready to go my problem that i have with this and my disappointment is like when the day come of course i go to work it's thursday uh, as soon as i knew that it was up i tried to go to the website i already have an account with mcfarland toys uh mcfarland store because i have bought a lot of stuff from mcfarland you know a lot of action figures i like to go there buy stuff from them i buy figures because i collect some of the mcfarland stuff and have ordered a couple of things even dc stuff that they have sold it you know and you have an account so i log into my account it was selling like hotcakes right away in a matter of minutes they have 500 pieces and different tiers very limited tiers and every tier the first hundred of pre-orders you can get like a signature cover or you know a issue or the cover or whatever signed by todd i didn't when i tried to do i wasn't able to get there then it says that you know if you get the comic book the part you know it's going to be a comic book or something no signature but it's the special edition didn't get to that either then the third one was oh you're gonna get something else you know like not the special art sign but it's a comic book or something you know the thing is this i'm trying to log in trying to sign up and i choose the thing it was like by the third there were like only four different tiers i'm going by the third tier still some time to go you know and you know i'm already kind of they're selling quick and I tried to log in and I put it on my basket and I go to the place where you have to enter your credit card information, all of that to set it up all. And every single time I'm trying to do it, it's saying, oh, you know, you have to sign up. Oh, you have to sign up. It's like, dude, I'm already signed up. So I go back there and I realize I'm going to sign up. So then I go and choose to go into this collector type of thing to get the newsletter stuff, which I do get the newsletters all the time. I'm already signed up to this. I already have an account. So I have to recreate my account. It says every time I try to do it, it says, you you know, it, it recognize it. I even reset my password several times. It didn't recognize it or it recognize it or whatever. Reset the password. And when I try to do the same thing a couple of times, several times, it rejected me when I try to get into my credit card information. So I said, you know what? I'm tired. I'm middle of the day. I'm at work. If this is step into blown statues, nice dynamic piece. Yeah, it is. So I'm trying to get it all done, you know? And I said, you know, I'm in the middle of the day. It's at work. I'm going to come home tonight and I'll take care of it again. Maybe it's just too much. I'm busy. I'm going to have a busy job. I don't have time to waste doing top of this type of thing. So I came back. By the time I come home, it's already sold. And I'm like, you know what? It stinks that that happens. And this is the thing that really struck me and i really upset me about the whole thing as i mentioned because i do have an account with them you know and it's to me it's like you know what what am i supposed to do you know like it, you know you try to do it i guess there were a lot of people in the in the website trying also to do the same thing a lot of people trying to log in so it was a mess you know some people went and when i go back to the backers they were like in the end there were only 300 and some backers when they have 500 pieces so they were selling more than one so people were buying in multiples and some of those people like they said that you have to do it in separate transactions so some people were using bots in order to get that and i'm sure they're gonna sell them in the aftermarket because in the end that's what a lot of people do they go and sell them on ebay or whatever for double the price and i'm sure the people are gonna be winning and some people were able to capture more how you can get 300 backers 250 backers when you have 100 pieces that means that 150 extra 150 pieces are floating around people got them you know doubles just so they can resell and to me that's it really i'm gonna use the expression piss me off try not to cuss here it really pissed me off because I was like, you know, like I do have an account with McFarlane Toys. You know, I've been buying stuff from them before, which I now I'm I'm reluctant to go back and do it. 
Honestly, they didn't have to crowdfund this statue. Honestly. Because it's it's going to sell. You know, yes, I understand with figures and all that, and it was successful, but with that McFarlane, with the, the spawn figure that he sold so many, there was it wasn't there was no addition size, it was open, they produced as, as many and they did. They should have a time limit for this to say not only 500 in, in this number, they could say we're gonna produce. You know, it's gonna be like you got two, three days, four days to as many as NECA does sometimes. They got the time limited. They they're, they're going to order as many as possible. I'm sure they could have done gone even beyond 500 pieces on this. They couldn't sell even you know like 1500 out of those. You know, they could do um, 2000. They, you know, to honestly, could make a lot of money out of the statues. And I don't care if it takes you know two years for them to release them. I don't mind to wait. But at least I have something that I've been wanting for a long time as a representation of this particular cover. So I gotta be honest with you. I it left a bad taste in my mouth. This experience that I'm, you know, because the, honestly, Todd knows it. He knows it. He has produced statues in the past and they have been successful. It's not like he doesn't need to. Oh, maybe we try this. Maybe it's not going to work out. It's going to sell. It's the 30th anniversary of Spawn. It's at the highest moment for Spawn history. A lot of people are into Spawn. There's a lot of fans. There's not many collectibles of Spawn. People are going to buy this. And this statue is definitely a winner. Only having 500 pieces, only for some flippers to sell out. That, to me, is stupid. It was a time edition only for a couple of days. But they only have a limit of 500 pieces. And that is the problem. Yeah, it's limited time, but they only have 500 pieces. The difference between like what they do limited time with like NECA does, what Manda does, or even other companies, like even when I, I pre-order my, um, uh, what is it? The, um, the, uh, uh, the, the enterprise, it was limited for a certain amount of time. They give you time, but they're going to produce as many, as many orders as they get. So this is the thing he said, it's only 500 piece founder pieces but we only have there an amount of days for it to happen and we stopped the the production so he came technically only with for you know thinking that he's going to sell only 500 so simply could have simply open it like that and it could have just instead of doing a tier base crowdfunding he should have just simply released him and pre-ordered him because he knew he would sell him because he has sold, you know, statues in the past, you know, particularly with the McFarlane toy line, the stuff that he did for The Walking Dead. Those statues, so you know, sold in time. He sold a lot of them too. Those Walking Dead are, you know, prized possessions for a lot of people. You know, they're very rare to find, and they were like, I remember with some of them, they won the Statue of the Year at Statue Forum. So yes, he could have done a lot. And that's the part. I am working in the middle of the day. I don't have time to pre-order this. I went, I tried, I tried several times, several times. And every single time it was like, I think it was a glitch in the system because he didn't recognize it. You need to enter uh, my credentials. So I re-enter. Oh, it doesn't recognize my credentials. And, but he, you know, it, it was a mess because I do have an account. Then I go back to my account. It, it, it didn't recognize it. And I, I, I just gave up. I said, you know what? It's too much. I'm in the busy of the day. I'm in the middle of the day. I'm busy doing work. And I said, I can wait, you know, it'd be okay. I'm sure there's going to be plenty by the end of the day. And then, of course, he does this tier based type of thing where only some people get a special edition thing, a signature in my pine. Might as well just sign the 500 pieces and give everybody the same thing. So that also left a, a, a bad taste in my mouth because he doesn't have an exclusive. That is the part. That is what other companies do. You have a limited time for the exclusive, perhaps. And then the rest of the time you get the other thing. That's what they did recently with the Back to the Future. Um, DeLorean that I pre-ordered from Tommy and uh, that is on production too. That was special time edition. You only have an special time limited for you to pre-order to get some extra things for free. And then after that, you would be charged for the, those things. So I pre-order early on and I'm thinking like I could do the same thing here and it didn't happen. So yeah, definitely. I'm not necessarily happy with this. I'm disappointed that I did not get it at the pre-order. Uh, I'm sure that at some point I might get it. In the aftermarket if i get lucky and if somebody sells it for the right price but honestly why do we have to do such a thing and uh believe me a lot of people i'm sure they share the same sentiment i try couldn't do it i heard some testimonies from some people that they were having a hard time trying to get it so i think i'm not alone in this boat i feel that you know i 
you know, Tal could have be more prepared with this one. He could have just having even an addition size of 1500 pieces, which is something normal nowadays. Uh, a lot of factories produce this amount of statues, and I think he would have sold like hotcakes. He still would sell 500. He would have sold even 2500 pieces of these, you know, easily, easily, and make a killer, you know, killer amount of money without a problem, you know, because there's gonna be plenty of people ready to buy. But when he only makes a limited amount, and then he puts a very limited time and then, you know, anybody can order as many as they want, as long as they have butts. And I saw at the end, I, that's the reason I wanted to share the website that there were only 345 backers and this 500 stuff were sold. So that means, of course, some of those people were able to get it right away. And the only way that you can able to get it right away when there's a flooded, everybody's flooding the website and people are not being able to log in. That means that there were people already there at checkout at the moment that it went live. And the only way that you can do it and mo order multi multiples is if you're doing it with a bot. That is just the way they do it, a lot of these people, so they can sell resell on the aftermarket. You know, and unfortunately, that's part of it. And sometimes companies don't really tackle these issues. Some companies have been able to manage it better. Sizeshu does a much better way in there. Or, you know, you can open it. You don't even have to tell people the addition size. And, you know, people will order and easily you can get the numbers without really thinking without really trying so hard and, and give in enough time so this is my disappointment i i was thinking i was i was i wanted to come tonight and talk about how excited i was of my pre-order but oh, unfortunately it didn't happen so yeah i'm disappointed um and upset maybe you can hear the upset part of me um the price was not a problem for me i think it was fine. I know some people might complain about it, but when you look at the dimensions of this and the size, uh, one thing I could say, I think the base could have been done a little bit smaller. Um, that's something that I would point out. I feel that the base was too big. Uh, at the same time, because of the way they create, um, the, the caves are so flowy and they're the ones sustaining the statue. I think they chose, they went for the more, the bigger, more stronger, more firm base, uh, in order to bring sustain, you know, to make it more sustainable to avoid leaning eventually because that's another thing that you can may have a problem so i think the engineering is fine but yeah at first impression i would have preferred to have a smaller base but now when when you look at it the way that is you know even a, a, a smaller profile base i think there's a lot of base there from some angles and but ultimately i think it wasn't a bad choice now there's another thing that um you know for some people i, I still remember there is a McFarland and DC collectibles and I consider this if you watch my video my top 20 collectibles from DC collectibles of all time um, DC collectibles Batman and spawn the statue this is a classic from DC direct DC collectibles from a long time um, this statue as is, it's a classic. It's still a great statue, in my opinion. It's based on an art. It's based on. Let me show you the art. Well, this is the statue that I was talking about. This statue is going for two thousand dollars in the aftermarket here, as you can see. It's a great statue. Great for the time. It was hand sculpted. Very terrific piece. Has a very gothic style. Very nice piece, but they're on opposite sides looking at different angles. Look at how, you know, it's hard to find it for a good price nowadays. You know, these people are asking for 2000 here, but it's it's hard to find this statue for a good price. Very good. But in my opinion, this was for me, one of my statues, one of the statues that I wanted. I've been wanting for forever, but now I don't think I want it anymore. You know, I think, you know, I think this is a much better choice what they did with this one from this statue, which still I consider a classic of many years and still one of the best statues ever produced by McFarlane Toys. I think in the end, this statue produced here now by directly by McFarlane Toys, not only through this is direct, I think it surpasses that one. Um, but, you know, again, I did not get the chance to own it. I, I heard some collectors, they, they were able to do it. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't have the opportunity. So it sucks for me. It doesn't suck for others. But um, yeah, it's kind of cool. And yeah, this is a type of statue that they, they should have produced more. Uh, you're celebrating the third anniversary. And I, I do believe in small edition sizes like everyone else. But I feel that, but you know, if you have a small edition size, just do a regular pre-order system rather than just doing a tier base crowdfunding plan that actually in my opinion is not necessary for this type of collectibles it's okay with some projects i i 
prove some of them like through Haslab, but Haslab has an open-ended thing. They are going to produce as many orders as they get. And I don't know why Mike Farley wanted to do a crowdfunding for this statue where he's only have a limited number of statues to sell. So might as well just simply do a simple pre-order and I still would sell, you know, through his website instead of just doing this nonsense about crowdfunding because he acting up like he's acting like he doesn't have the money. You know, when he does have the money, you know, his company has the money. They make a lot of money with all the figures they sell year in, you know, every year. You know, he sells a lot of stuff. And he has all these deals with all these statues, things that he does and everything he's doing. So he's not lacking of money. He has the money. I don't know why he thought that, oh, I'm not going to be able to sell 500 pieces out of these. You know, so I'm going to crowdfund it. I, that's some that's BS in my opinion. But OK, you know, I'm not the one running. You know, I love Todd. You know, don't get me wrong. I love Todd. But this time around, man, I'm just like, I'm not necessarily too happy with Todd and the choice that he made. All right, let me go to the chat. Maybe I agree some of the things. Uh, we're working and busy most of the time. Do you think the rush of trying to score a collectible is the fun part of collecting? <laughs> I don't like to rush. I don't like to be rushed. Um, some people go for FOMO, you know, and I think a lot of FOMO was it's, it was here for me for a lot of people. Um, at the same time, I think this statue could have done really well with an you know open edition size. Um, he could have produced a five to fifteen hundred pieces. They will be sold in no time too. They will do well. Um, he can do the same as SciShow. He has the money for it. He has the ability for it. He has done statues in the past and they have been successful. So it's not like he he's trying something new. He's not. It definitely this is you know, it's it's intricate design, but he's already selling statues for DC. So it's not like he doesn't have the means for it. And they're going in normal pre-order. So he could have done that, just put the level of the third anniversary, no time. Uh, we're gonna produce a thousand, we're gonna produce fifteen hundred pieces, just and it's a good number. 1,500 pieces is not a bad number in this economy, in this time and day when a lot of the collectible companies are selling that. DC normally used to make uh, you know, just 2,000 pieces. That was an average for DC. 1,500 was normal. You know, like basic. You know, that's the, the standardized. And then it went to 2,500 pieces. And they were sold. And I believe that, you know, when you do the math, you know, 500 plus 500 times 500 times 500, that's, that's good money. But 500 times 1,500, then you're making three times the money. So I don't know. And definitely you can, you can sell a lot, you know, and definitely, and I don't care if it takes longer just to produce, you know, I'm okay with that. As long as I get the piece that I want and McFarlane has done really nice touches in the past. So yeah, disappointed with that. Not necessarily happy It's you know, I wanted to talk about the great things about the statue and there's a lot of great things about the statue, but the fact that, um, it was hard to get for me. I'm not sure for other people. I'm not sure what was the problem because again, I'm logging in. I logged in into the account. I'm always logged in into that account and I could see my information. I was able to see my transactions. I was thinking what's going on here. So I look in at my transaction history. It was there. I can see all my stuff that I purchased over the years. And then when I try to put that in my basket and pay with my credit card it's, it's saying that you need to log in, you need to sign up or not sign up. Sorry, sign up. You need to log in. And when I enter my credentials again, it says wrong credentials. I don't know what was happening. I think there was a glitch in the system. Something was not right in the whole thing. Uh, and it, it, again, it has to do with a lot of people perhaps flooding the website, trying to also get a pre-order. So we'll see. I don't know. As a, you know, I'm not so happy about the whole ordeal. I just leave it like that. All right, let's move it on because I already spent a lot of time talking about this <laughs> and I don't want to sour you with that. So I want to go back to SciShow. Let me go back to SciShow. And I want to talk about Kodo Vukia, another statue they released today or oh, this week. I'm sorry. This is a re-release dark mold night brother. This is a repaint more of a grayish darker kind of like, I don't know, patina type of style. Um, this, it was another artifact that is a one seven scale that did really well, very hard to come by. The original came out. I think there was even a second re-release of this one, if I'm not mistaken. But um, very popular and a lot of people loved it and still love it. And but now, of course, it's a re-release with this paint. I would say the paint is fine. For those that miss out on the first one, th the first time around, this is the second time around. Interesting choice with the color. A lot of more of a brown bronze tone, as you can see, kind of like a bronze statue. Very 
intricate detail. Darth Maul always been popular, of course, as a character that they didn't have too much time on, on, you know, on the movie, you know, it was just a few minutes, but man left so much imp an impression that has become one of the most popular characters, uh, Sith characters in the Star Wars universe. Definitely a character that, you know, even the comics are good. I love the comics. Um, that will have been produced and the ones are still being produced now by Marvel Comics, but the ones original went from Dark Horse. So this is $160. Again, this is a release. So you missed out on the original artifacts, then definitely this is the the time to do it. Let me kind of show you for those they don't have reference or visual reference of the original. You have the Kotobukiya Dart Mall. This is the, as you can see, this is going for $239 here on eBay. This is the original. A lot of people love this one. It's a great artifacts, you know, like, like the colors. So again, they are now with this new coloration. If you're really into that, um, then definitely go for it. For many people, this is perhaps the, even here. Look at Kotobukiya for $300. It's not, it has gone up in price. So yeah, I would have preferred for them to re-release the same version. You know, it's an art, you know, I'm okay with re-releases on those uh, with artifacts because artifacts never, uh, never sold as, you know, limited edition with, a, you know, limited number pieces. They always sold, you know, they have open edition sizes. So yeah, I don't know. But yeah, if you missed out and you want something, you want to pay the $300, this version might be good. It looks like a stat, you know, like a bronze statue, and some people might go for that. Actually, they might prefer that in the display, it, you know, as a standalone piece, maybe for your bookshelf, for your collection of Star Wars books or things or whatever, you know, definitely you can go for that option. All right, so let me take you now to a spec fiction. And the reason I'm coming to a spec fiction is because I want to show you another company selling stuff in this case we're gonna look at ryu ryu studio this is the one piece marco one six scale statue this is 715 dollars it's pricey it's a one six of course it's just resting elements also some abs some plastic some you know things to recreate that fire effect that you see all the time this is an interesting looking piece um my only problem that I have is that it looks too busy. And I, something that I mentioned before with, uh, in other videos, um, I one of the things that I like about anime is that I like anime. You know, I do like it. But sometimes I find that a lot of anime statues are very busy um, when a lot of things happening, a lot of detail. And that can be very distracting. And I think that companies have to be careful when they're designing this to not to look too distracting. I think it's kind of cool. I like the bluish. But there are some parts of this, and I think the mention of, the, you know, that's one thing that I would say is the ratio of the character of the statue itself, which is the main focal point, is tiny in comparison to everything else. So I feel that he's only like a quarter of the visual reference here. So it's more about technically what is showcasing here more than Marco, the character, you are seeing everything, all the effects around him. And that is the focal point. It's just the power is the 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 stuff around him the water power energy whatever and uh that could be distracting and loses you uh from certain angles you can see him but still feels like a little bit you know and yes i get it you know they want to create this kind of like all inspiring type of effect and you know a lot of times companies want to do that and but you know i don't know it just it sounds to, it looks to me when you're doing a statue i do prefer for statues to be more of showcasing things in a way that it's um, more visually ple pleasing, that I'm able to see. Hey, what's up, Knight? Infinity and Beyond, my friend. <laughs> yes, I will tell you that I, I would prefer for that to be um, something that is more visual, more because it, it's a phoenix, as you can see right now. I just notice the phoenix, the beak right there, and it's so much stuff happening. So yeah, I would say it looks kind of cool. The concept idea, the desire to represent this way with the materials. It's just in the end, the effects, they are very, very, there's so much going on there. And, um, I've seen other statues. We have seen other statues from this company. Some are very impressive. And, uh, I don't know. This is perhaps one the first one that I can say that I'm not necessarily completely blown away. And I think the concept could have been done better. There are other statues that are coming. 
Uh, there is like, I, I see this Luffy and Ace. This also, I think I did have the opportunity to talk about this one. This does have a better reference because they are both at the center. They're not engulfed in it. So, but also the effect can be also big. So the base can be a lot big. So I feel that the ratio can be worked on, but this one has a better, it's very visually than the one we just saw. Uh, because they're not completely engulfing things that actually distracting you to see the characters themselves on their body and their physique and what they're doing, the action that they're, they're doing at that moment. So, uh, yeah, there, the couple of the statues are fantastic. Definitely this collection, this collection is growing. I think Ryu is doing really nice stuff, uh, Ryu. But still, there's some room to grow. At least with this new piece, definitely is not necessarily uh, the best, in my opinion, that they have produced so far. Probably is the, my least favorite. All right. So as we are here in Spec Fiction, let me take you to talk about this new Blissway. Sylvester Stallone, Rocky statue, 1976, is based on the first film. $649, I think it's a fantastic price for a quarter scale piece. As you know, with Blissway, they do this hybrid pieces where the statue is polystone, but the portrait in this case, it's PVC, it's not sculpted. They normally do that with the statues. I I'm sure that this is gonna be the same here. I don't, um, but when you look at this, uh, it has sophisticatedly tailored and designed outfits. Uh, Rocky, one team base, uh, one head with fedora, one right hand holding a rubber ball, one left hand, Normal one uh, butt kiss the dog and one name plate uh, Materials the head is resin. Oh, okay. So actually they're not going for the PVC now. They actually fully sculpting this Cool beans. The hair is wool. Okay. So he has root hair. Oh, okay. Now now we're talking they're going into like let's let's go all out uh, it has one head with a fedora, one right hand holding a rubber ball. Okay, I read that already. Uh, body is polystone resin. The best accessory is polystone. Custom fabric, real leather, packaged styrofoam, and carton box. Okay, so actually this is going to be fully sculpted. Now you got my attention. I think definitely because, you know, I never mind the, in the past when they did the, the you know, the the hybrid pieces when it was PVC portraits. I think it was it was really well done, but it seems to me that technology has improved in a way now with a lot of these producers that statues are actually coming along. They're, they're looking really nice, um, even when you're fully sculpted. And I think this is a really nice representation of this, this version of Rocky. So that song looks great there. Very nice statue and the way they're representing it. Now, it seems like it's leaning out a bit, uh, uh, leaning a bit. Not sure it's something that has to do with the, as they showcase on the, in the image of the movie, but it, it kind of, there's a little bit of lean, which not necessarily looks great. In my opinion, they could have, even though it might be the image, they could have straightened a bit because the fear now is that, okay, it seems like he's going to, even, even like that in the head, it looks like he's leaning more like it's falling, like, I don't know. Like it's gonna moonwalk or something. I don't know. It just it just doesn't look like it should be that there should be that lean. Let me see. Yeah, it's leaning there. And maybe in the image is leaning too, but they could have they can change it. Maybe that's just not even a photo. Now let me see if we can go to Blissway. I will tell you this, the price is excellent for a quarter scale piece. And I think that that's great, you know, that you can get to see prices like this. Here you can see 1976. 300 Titanium Mickey Mouse, that's another thing. We don't, we don't need that. I don't like Blizzway's new website. It's kind of weird. Here you can see what they are selling. This other stuff we have talked about it, but we don't see that. All right, so I'm going to do Blissway Rocky statues. Blissway Rocky to show you all the statues that Blissway has produced, the different var variations. Now this Rocky too, such a iconic piece. Of course, this is the now that we're seeing now. 
This is uh, here, uh, Collector's Freak. I haven't been a Collector's Freak in a long time, I'm telling you. I used to frequent this, this place. No more. Very nice statue there. That looks great. That prototype looks fantastic. All right, let's get the conversation. Maybe we can go to um to their Instagram. We'll see. But the original, they have this one. This piece here was the first one that they would this style with their, and of course, based on the second film. This was their original. And this is uh, one of the best, in my opinion, statues. A lot of people love this statue. So they come in now with a version of the same, but of course, based on the original film. Cool. Cool they're doing that. This statue, when it came out, really had a lot of praise. For many, considered even better than any of the statues produced by um, PCS. Still, people seem to love it very much. Here's from uh, photos from Statue Forum. Here is a collector, very nice statue. I'm telling you, very nice statue. So yeah, they they did this one, another variant variation. Look at that, I love this. This is a very nice statue, one of the best statues ever produced by Blizzway, in my opinion. The likeness is great, and I don't think, if I'm not mistaken, that actually the portrait was. I don't know if it was actually polished stone, but um, very nice depiction. So now, of course, now this variant is coming out. It's cool. Let's go to Instagram Bliss Way. Maybe we see more images there. I think, of course, they're they're thing. The other ones had fully sculpted hair. Now, of course, we get in the rooted. Trying to see if there's any pictures there that we can use. No. And here you can see that there's other stuff that is coming soon and all their statues they're gonna come so yeah i would say this is a great statue overall i was trying to see if there were other pictures that fedora looks nice the dog looks nice very cool i think it's in the end yeah it might be leaning a little bit but other than that i think it's a great piece Kudos to them for doing an amazing job and going back to this. Um, yeah, $649. That's an excellent price. It's excellent starting point for, uh, for this collectible. All right. So that is what Blizzway did. Now, let me take you to another company uh, as we are here. And we're going to look at divine statue divine studio. This company. Uh, this company is a company also, I think it's based also, if I'm not mistaken, also based in Singapore, but this company has done work with XM Studios. That's how I've, the stuff that they did with the top, uh, anything that XM Studios did that has to do with the darkness, with Witchblade, they were designed by Divine Statues. So Divine Statues has been partaking, the participating with them. They have done other statues with XM Studios. They have different things there. If you go to their website, kind of give you an idea what they have. Divine Statue. This is the, they did the Eddie um, statues also within compare, you know, in collaboration with uh, XM Studios, I think the Angelos, the Aphrodite, all of them, they have been doing it with the stuff, the anything that they, the Witchblade, anything that has to do with Top Cow and this partnership that they have with XM Studios, they've been really involved. This is a fantastic statue. All the statues that they have done with Top Cow, like this one, very cool looking. That Aphrodite is one of the best statues ever, in my opinion. That Angelos is uh, terrific. I talk about it here on the channel as well. And definitely that is a good one too. But now if you really look at the Instagram. I 
I think they have it there. Divine statues. I'm trying to see if we see it. Right there, divine sculptures. I think that's the one. I, I don't think it is. You know, that is the thing. I'm trying to remember where are they have their own. Maybe on Facebook. Let's see. Right there. Now, Divine... Oh, no. Now I have to correct myself. Divine Statues is actually based in Germany. It's in a European company. Uh, that does a lot of this work, of course, uh, a partnership with XM Studios, but they are actually based in Germany now that I they remember well. Here you can see that they're based in Stuttgart, Germany. Um, not sure if they're actually... The offices are there, but the funding is Asia. I don't know. I, I don't tell. But yeah, this company. But recently, here you can see they've been doing this partnership with Cinescope. Uh, and they're doing this. Are the concepts they've been showcasing on Facebook? These are the stuff. The Alice uh, Beyond Wonderland. They're based, of course, on all the comic books from Cinescope. So they're going to go with this. Um, a lot of this, of course, based on the art of um, J. Scott Campbell with many of the covers. So here you can see uh, this Van Helsing. Another one that is coming very soon. Look at this one. So it, again, this is from Cenoscope. The Rib Claw. This is all actually for Top Cow. This is from Sylvestri. I'm really looking for a Rib Claw. This is a character that deserves a statue. You know, one of the original statues ever in this market was from them. Here's the stuff that I have done with XM Studios. Amazing looking pieces, definitely. Now I think this is Sideshow. That one right there. But in any case, this is the new one, Robin Hood. Quarter scale, also based on the Cenoscope stuff. The Cenoscope franchise. It's out thousand dollars, nine hundred and ninety-nine dollars. Quarter scale piece. Uh they don't have addition size yet, but here you can see the pictures. That's a huge base. Looking at that base, it's huge, but a nice detail there with the title of the character. Definitely they are following the R, the Cenoscope. Very, very cool. Very nice. Really like the choice here. Very nice. And of course, Enesco produces a lot of those comics are very sexy. You know, I think this is a very sexy statue for sure. Very nice looking, very nice representation. Not sure it comes with interchangeable parts. To be honest with you, it doesn't need them. Sometimes a lot of the times when you see a lot of these statues with so many interchangeable things, you know, like sometimes it kills the mood because there's so much stuff. It doesn't need it. I think it's, you know, it's, it's all it is. Here you can see the artist is XM Studios Design and Developing Team is involved in this in the 2D part of it, which is the design concept. And uh, Alberto Tawada is the, the company that does the 3D, the one that did um, the pretty much the sculptor, the, the 3D sculptor here. So very cool. Again, this is a partnership. I'm not sure if this is in also XM Studios. Let me look. I don't think they, they sold. Although XM Studios was involved here in this. I don't think they are selling this on their website. No, they don't have it there. So, but yeah, they are very involved. They designed the concept. Ultimately, uh, device that is selling directly. Uh, another company that is starting working, uh, just a designing company, sculpting for, uh, in partnership with XM Studios. But now, of course, they're going into their own route. And uh, I think, and, and this is mostly because they directly have the license of Cenoscope, while with XM Studios, they have the, they share the license from Top Cow Productions. So we'll see. You know, we'll see what happens here. But it's, it's a very cool statue for sure. And definitely kudos and, Good luck to Divine Studios for this company, European company, definitely to grow and uh, start bringing more stuff as the time goes. But now I want to take you to SciShow. And we come into SciShow because I want to show you the, I would say the big piece of big release from SciShow this week, which a lot of people, there's, a, last week we talked about it. There was a lot of people were divided about it. Um, I'll tell you this, $690 is a very nice price point for a 
premium format figure for a, for a statue of this scale. I think the, the size is great because it's tall. It measures 27 inches tall and it's because he's standing on top of this um, pole thing. It looks great. And yes, a lot of people are divided because they don't like the design. We talked about it extensively last week in reference to the, the concept here, of course, the choice that was done here by the artist and going to give you a homage to the people here. Let me look at the details here. So we given, uh, we respected Martin Canale. He is the designer and sculptor of this piece. Uh, Derek Rosengrand is the painter. Um, Chi Zuma also painted here. The Sasha design development team involved in, in the whole process design, all that development. But I, I, I like it. Um, it's not for everyone for sure. Uh, but I, the more I see it, the more I, I like the idea, the concept, very late eighties, early nineties. Of course, they're going for, uh, that era. They started taking me in the mid eighties and went on with the darker tone, the era that actually everything started, as I mentioned before with seeing Kivitz, he is the one that really built this trend that was followed by other artists, you know, started with a cover and then move on into many artists doing, um, this particular design this particular concept and i think it, it kind of took a lot of you know a lot of artists a lot of cover artists did it you know it was more gothic you know like the long ponytails the very long cape very sometimes anthropomorphic looking batman looks more like a bat like an animal like a vampire sometimes rather than just the the the, the regular hero so and the body of course you know, have all these different looks, you know, like you see um, so many, so many, you know, artists of that era. And I, I did mention it last week. So if you want to know more in detail what I think about it, of course, go to the last week's video and then on the timestamps, you can see it and definitely go in detail with all the artists and the inspiration. But uh, I, I like it. You know, it's, it's just different. And I know, of course, it's not for everyone. But the choice is definitely, I can see Bisley right there. I can see so many Bolton. I can see the, the, the inspiration of all the artists and all these different bats and very gothic style. It's so unique. Now, if we go here to in Facebook, of course, we look at Martin Canale. He mentioned it. Uh, he did, did a follow up to the first um, comment that he did. And we talked about that comment last week, but he extended a little more on the details. Uh, and the expression of the stuff that he thought about it and uh, uh, giving kudos for that. Here was talking on our station. Here you can see the stuff that he was showcasing there. The this is are the concepts. You can see. Some people were pointed out that the portrait changed. I, I saw some comments, people online saying that the, the portrait was different on the final product. Uh, I could say that on the paint, I, I do see that the eyes seem to be wider here than they are on the paint job. But at the same time, I feel that this, some of it has to do with the angle uh, because of the way they took the pictures here. They seem that they're more wider, as you can see right there, very wide. But when you see the prototype, it seems that the, the eyes are more like thinner and uh, yeah i can agree with that i think the eyes need to be widened and maybe that's something that the choice that the 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 prototype was done by the artist maybe that will be improved because on the sculpt definitely you can see the eyes are more wider and definitely more on the look of batman uh, of that time so yeah something that definitely maybe needs some work uh People pointed out about the chin and the face and all that and that i will disagree i think the paint job give her a look and i think mostly because the smaller eyes and that changes but when i look at the chin here and i look at the chin there it's the same chin it's the same so there's no change on the sculpt i think the sculpt was done perfectly i think a lot has to do with the the choice of the painter and the way he chose to portray the eyes a little more you know a little more smaller thinner squinty that is the right way i think squinty would be better so it's a little more he's squinting more when while well, he has the more open eyes here still has a little seriousness but the white there's more white in those eyes so yeah i think it's the paint that kind of makes the difference i can see the detail the gothic detail there 
the choice that was made a very interesting look at the way the 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 sole of the boot is holding there very interesting idea yeah some people might be afraid of some leaning but i think the way the piece is holding on i think it'd be fine here's of course the portrait now the way he does the portrait i'm not sure if there was an idea or i i was thinking that perhaps they would have a switch out portrait at some point not sure why they didn't look at even at the detail in his face definitely he just shave you can see that cool so many different angles and that cape is so 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 long yeah i like this i like that actually he posted all these pictures this is a great reference for anyone and I want to say thank you to Martin for always being open about showcasing his stuff on his page. If you don't, you should follow Martin. I think he's a very nice guy. He's a nice guy. Um, but um, here are pictures that he portrayed. Here's the preview when they have the preview. He is, he, we talk about it. Um, uh, the previous post that he did here and this is what we took last week but then he came with another preview because of course we had the preview video the showcase uh, we might actually look at it where he's talking about this preview saying very happy to to, to can share this preview that i can share i suppose uh let's not forget martinez uh, argentinian so english is not his first language uh, the new batman from sideshow collectibles since i get the chance to play with a character done many times here we made him in a very comic style with a strong reference inspired on great artists i really love a combination of my favorite batmans uh, brian boland simon bisley and john bolton so i was right on the money when i said these are the guys that he took inspiration from among others, but essentially a representation of an aesthetic, re uh, an aesthetic related to the long ear Batman and of an era from the late 80s to the mid late 90s. So it also relates to lines of the contemporary such as Tim Sale, Kelly Jones and Neil Adams. Neil Adams, perhaps because Neil Adams was also drawing, but this is the time when Neil Adams was actually trying to copy more of the young crowd rather than going into his old style. Uh, but here in the reels, let's see if we can see it um it, it has a very nice it's, it's a very nice size you know 27 inches tall it looks pretty tall and impressive it's not a bad and again this is not for everyone i think the people who are going to love this the most are those who um you know are more into the gothic style batman they like that i think this piece works better as a standalone piece you might be able to display with other things uh, and definitely it's great the I, I like the detail definitely it's not bad the only thing i would say the only difference i see between the prototype or the 3d renderings and this is definitely is the eyes the choice on the painting but also he's looking down so we cannot really see his eyes really well there but yeah it's an interesting concept i think price it's a it's great for what they're doing here and definitely it's uh it, it's manageable it's not going too crazy they're not going overboard let's see how it does on the uh, on the pre-orders and definitely when we see the final product we'll see how that goes all right so this is what we have here and while i have you at sideshow let me take you oh you know we look at all these pictures here yeah i think we look at that i like the colors that they chose there on the base the the paint job the i i would say the painter the only thing that i fault him is the eyes but other than that everything else it looks really well well done a very the combination of colors how things cha change but i think perhaps the 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 statue was painted by one artist the base was painted by someone else but whoever painted the base uh definitely did a fantastic job there all right so here while we're here we're gonna talk about this piece that is also uh, from infinity studio also available at spec fiction if you want to go there this is Neytiri on i don't remember i don't really know if i'm pronouncing it right but this is from avatar the way of water the film uh even though this is a wonder is this a wonder scale which i don't know how tall that be i'm not so sure if the, even the actual size well, it says 40 inches tall, which is really, really tall, but necessarily because I, if I'm not mistaken, these characters are really tall. So I'm not sure if this is actually accurate. Maybe it's within the realm of one third scale statues, but it doesn't seem accurate. I don't know. I, I have to know the, the measurements. It might not even be the right measurement. 
but it's three thousand five hundred five dollars expensive but let me see some of the materials perhaps we can see that is where, where, we, where we have it then the details what's in the box is detail under uv light um uh, rotten bedded top woven skirt jewelry on hands and feet pandora team base glass eyes it's made out of resin and polyurethane so it has you know a good combination of materials for different things I would say it looks really good. And I will tell you, I'm never a big Avatar fan. I will tell you, I, I didn't even watch this movie theater, this film, last film. I was watching it and I fall asleep. I gotta be honest with you. I haven't even finished watching it, so I need to rewatch it again. But now I need to watch it from the beginning again. I started watching it. It's okay. I didn't find it. Then I fall asleep. By the time I wake up, it's, just, it's the credits. My wife watched it all. I didn't. And my wife's not even a big fan. She was watching it because of me. So I went there, turn it on. So let's watch this film. Started watching it and I just fall asleep. You know, I'm an old man. What can I say? So um, I like the detail. And again, Infinity Studio is a great company. That's amazing detail. Uh, love the base. This is what I talk about is small bases. You don't have to have huge bases. Some companies do. You can have a very tiny base that tells a story. And that's more than enough because at the end of the day, you want to showcase the character. Uh, and that's something that a lot of anime statues uh, we were talking about now, they're failing to do because they want to do this huge all inspiring type of concept and in many ways they kill themselves by doing so because this statue is all inspiring just by itself and having just a very small base that you tell it's a story it represents the world with the of course of this film i like the detail glass size i think is really terrific very nice detail i would say that just on the detail alone and of course you have this the uv light type of thing you turn the lights you can see the paint that is a really cool concept an idea definitely going for the movie again look at that base nice with the detail simple but really well done and classy and there's a lot of great detail on that base without going overboard that's all you need very cool very nice colors very nice choice uh, mixed media of course in it very nice piece and i'm glad that it's actually here uh the pictures are better here on uh on side that they are a uh, spec fiction and there's so many different angles yeah i'm definitely gonna look at watch this movie again i probably do it this weekend i don't know oh family's coming over tomorrow my daughter's coming with her husband so uh, and we're gonna have my sister-in-law so we're gonna have a cookout all that uh, so it's gonna be fun but this looks cool after church definitely spent that with the family so maybe i watch this movie while they're here who knows but yeah really cool statue um definitely very nice concept there and i gotta give an infinity studio another killer piece definitely they're doing doing fantastic okay all right let me guess what time it is oh wow 10 38 here temporary of course in this time <laughs> late Wow, I thought it would be a, like a short night, but it seems like it's not. And everybody's a little bit quiet, but I want to say to all of you, thank you very much for taking time to be in here in this live chat. It's always a pleasure to take the time and being able to um, to talk to you and spend the time. All right, so the last, um, well, not the last, there's two companies I want to cover now. I want to talk first before we move into the next thing. Uh, I want to talk about JND Studios, of course. Of course, this company with this new piece they have. Uh, I'm going to go. Let me see. If we can go to JND. Although, J, uh, you know, we're gonna go to uh, Spec Fiction. They have it now. This today just went on Spec Fiction. You can go to the JND website. Uh, sold out, and you know there. But they have the two pieces here. They got the dual and the single combos. Uh, this uh, the Batman Returns. Catwoman, this is the regular single version. They were saying that they will try to sell it. It was technically for two thousand dollars. With Spec Fiction, you get a premium, but you can get it from Spec Fiction, which I trust as a good company. This is gonna release sometime in the fourth quarter of 2025, so it's gonna be a long time to wait. Probably it's not gonna release it until 2026. Uh so be prepared for that. But twenty-two hundred dollars, two thousand dollars it was directly from J and D. But in any case, um, you get in directly here and it ships uh, free to the continental United States. So 
technically you're in the United States, you're paying for shipping here instead of just shipping it from Korea here. So yeah, you gotta give that. So it, it might take longer to be released here than anywhere else that GND, GND is gonna be the first one to get it, the GND customers. Anybody is gonna take a little longer. But I will tell you this, there was at the beginning a comparison, people trying to make comparisons between on the Bliss Way and the Prime One Studio, which I think is a fantastic piece. But I gotta be honest with you, I think this is better. I think the portrait is a lot better. On this particular, on the classic one, on the just the, the single one, the face is clearly Michelle Pfeiffer. It, it's so good. And even if it, if it wasn't, I think it's a pretty representation of this character. And it's a beautiful face. Look at those very piercing blue light eyes and the face and you're looking at a piece and some people are like sometimes that makes me that say well you know there's not much silicone on the piece because it's covered by this actually there's silicone under you know it's everything is silicone even the the whole head it's not just a little piece here a little piece there they have to do the full silicone things and then of course they put this on top so it is because it has tailored you know sometimes people think that these are sculpted things but they are tailored pieces and I think the choice is great. The bases are always simple with JND, but I like they went with this with a little more of a story there. You see the cat on the balcony thing on the top of that thing, and there's no sprinkle everywhere. That is a very cool concept, very simplistic. From all the statues that we have seen from Catwoman, even from the one scale from Tour Head, that I think is fantastic, and what they did, every piece has served a purpose, everything has been great. But I think this one, if it delivers the way they have, they're promising, is going to be the one to beat. I think it's really nice. Of course, if you have the money for it, go for it. But I think they went with a very stylish pose. The walk, the catwalk is nice. It's a really nice looking piece. Very nice detail. I, 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 I this is just probably one of the best from JND Studios. So far, I think this is the best they have done so far. And this is, in my opinion, is going to be super popular. It's already sold out. So is this going to be one that is going to people going to be going to be talking when it comes out? They're going to be talking about it. I think it's going to be considered one of the hard, even one of the hardest to get out in the aftermath. It's such a fantastic piece. And I think the base really works well. It's still with the same design that they that they technically are using their signature design for the bases. It's good. Even the cat there. And those are, of course, those eyes that they use. Medical graded. Looks so great. And I saw even a picture of that. Even the eyes are go to the cat. Even the cat has some of those eyes. It's just the, the level of detail that they do with these pieces is just phenomenal. I think we're going around. So this is for the single. Fantastic piece. Okay. So this is it. If you don't have money to blow, then to go for the poor man's version. You'll be more than an enemy. It's not the poor man's version, but definitely you, you get what I'm saying. And here, of course, he got, because I saw the video, of course, the representative was talking about it, that they want, they were thinking about it, keep it low. So they went with something more affordable for everyone, at least keep it to the, the prices they used to have. And they went, and still $2,000 is still a lot of money, but whatever. And here is the dual version. You want everything. You want everything. Then you go with the two pieces in this collection. And you know, there's been criticism about this one, you know, without the portrait saying that that is not Michelle Pfeiffer. Some people are saying that I gotta be honest with you. To me, that's Michelle Pfeiffer. I, I see Michelle right there. Is it a hundred percent? No, I would say 99% yes. And to me that 90% is great. And even if she wasn't, I think it's a hot piece and I think it's great. So yeah, for experience, I think I received the JND white beard from Spec Fiction about three, four months after release. Yeah, I, 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 I'm, I'm sure you, you have to wait because they even like JND saying like they releasing. I think this week. I don't know. I saw a note they were saying in a video they were releasing on this week's video from JND. They were saying that they finalized, so they were they're shipping all the their direct customers, and after they finished with those customers, I think it was Superman statue. And after that, they're going to release. So yeah, so yeah, prepare to wait. But right now, there's no way you can order from JND directly. So you have to go through Spec Fiction or whoever else has it. But look at that, that Michelle Pfeiffer. I, 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 this is a great looking piece. Great detail now with the base both together side by side. Very nice features on that. Of course, the physique 
I remember as a kid, I love Michelle Pfeiffer. Even I think it was one of the hottest women in the world. And I still think she is. Even at they're old, I still know she's older now. She still looks great. But they did a fantastic job bringing her here. Yes, it looks more like a younger version of Michelle Pfeiffer from that era. It, you know, Michelle Pfeiffer, I don't remember how old she was when that movie. She wasn't that young, per se. She wasn't that young. She's not. Um, when the movie came out. But this looks maybe like a Michelle Pfeiffer from her in her 20s. You know, like, I got to feel you. Like, matter of fact, let's just look it up. Let's just look it up. Let's just look it up. Michelle Pfeiffer. How old is she? All right. So she was born in 1958. Um, Batman Returns. Was in 1992. So, so she was 34 years old when that she, she, she did the film. So she was in her thirties here. She looks more like in her twenties. Uh, so yeah, she looks a bit younger, you know, than it is, but I still can see, it seems like he has more younger features, more of a 20 year old rather than a 30 year old. So I would say, yeah, he looks a little younger. I'm okay with that. Still. I can see Michelle Pfeiffer there. Looks really, really good. And of course, Michelle Fire always has this physique where she's very, you know, thin and athletic. So it looks great. I love that he, he has this coat. It's so good. This is a great piece. I'm telling you, it's a great, great piece. Um, It's fun to watch. You know, it's fun just to, to see this. And, you know, yeah, I think if you can only have one, then definitely go for the classic outfit. You know, you'll be more than well served. But if you can afford it and you can have the two, why not? You know? The duel is such a great addition, and I think a lot of people are gonna have fun with both. Um, it looks so good. Yeah, she looks great. The eyes are so pierced. You know, they're so good. They both are great. Um, and yes, we can go with the um Batman Returns. Catwoman from Prime One Studio, which is Prime One Studio Blitzway. That's the two-head right there, which is also good. Museum Master Line, Batman Returns, Catwoman. This is a great piece. Don't get me wrong. And perhaps, it's from some angles, it looks more like the actress in the film. Yeah, I can see it more in her 30s there. And some people will go for that more accurateness. Even the cat looks better on the other. And yeah, it's a nice choice. Very playful choice. And of course, it's Bliss Way on the, the street. And yes, it's going to be this match of which one is best and all. And all people are going. But, you know, a lot of people already missed out on this one. Um, and yeah, it, it's a really nice base, too. You know, it, it, it at the end of the day, it's a matter of choice, a matter of preference. They went for this one. And uh, it's nothing wrong with that piece either. You know, there's nothing wrong. I can see Michelle Pfeiffer really there, too. But this one. It looks more natural, at least more vibrant in some way with the silicone face and portrait and those eyes are more piercing in my opinion. Another great choice. Um, they're so close. And again, it's a matter of choice, fully sculpted or not. But yeah, this is just, just a beautiful. The duel is the one to go, in my opinion. If you have it all, if you want to have the ultimate thing, then why not? Why not go for it? Really nice. Man. Some people were even saying, like, I, and I get it. I said, why is it that there's no choice for us to have Michelle Pfeiffer like this? You know, if you already have the Prime One Studio, you want to just have a companion that, that some people were saying that will be the ultimate piece, uh, call, you know, display having the, the, the Prime One and this one as an option, but the option was not given. You have to buy it with the dual, with the combo, uh, which is a shame that they didn't give it as a separate thing. Even if they go a smaller edition size with that separate one, why not? I think it's just to incentivize for people to really go for the extra thing. Uh, you know, it's just a trick, I suppose. It's a way to trick people just to spend more money. But it's still a great piece, man. It's such a great piece. I don't know. This is one. Definitely, again, this is, in my opinion, perhaps the best JND studio piece that they, we have seen so far. So kudos to JND doing such an amazing job um if you have the money go for it uh but yeah wait it's gonna wait it's gonna be a long wait so be prepared to wait even longer than they have said so 
that's how it is you know very very nice very nice looking piece uh, and very 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 fun to to really see what they're doing here which and these just do it all right let me go now to the final thing of the night here spec fiction and i want to cover this piece is you know i was looking at this i was like i don't want to talk about this but then i said you know what let's talk about it uh and this is neca you know of course we went from this premium thing that i wanted to finalize with jnd studio because to me that's the best piece of this week the best thing here and the most expensive of course because i have a you know like my wife says i have an expensive taste you know expensive eye always my eyes go to the most expensive things you know unfortunately that's how it is but what i gotta tell you this when i saw this from neck i was like okay what is this i seen this before i seen actually in some comic book shops they have this you know and then display life-size prop replica this is necklace you know they have done this the arkham knight batman life-size foam replica and i said okay what's the big deal and i seen it in person a couple of times they're okay but they are very cheaply made and they actually when you look at them in person they are cheaply made and again it's all foam so i was thinking okay cool it's foam how expensive that can be well, here's your answer. 15, almost $1,500. And I was like, heck no, I'm not paying $1,500 for foam. I'm not paying that type of money for foam, like $1,500 for foam. And I seen him at the, in some comic book shops, man. I'm like, heck no. Yeah, I, I get it. You know, like a live is foam. They should be even cheap, cheaper than that. It could be $500 the most, you know, like, yes, yeah, a license, but that thing is, that's no weight. I was like, no way, no way. And then of course I saw this Deadpool. It's not even the Deadpool base on the, on the, you know, like of the movies. Yeah. I was like, okay, it could be at the, this is the Deadpool from the video game. How much is this? $1,600 for the life-size Deadpool video game base thing, which the video game is fine, but it's, it's not Ryan Reynolds. And it seems that you can. I don't know. It was like, heck no, $1,600 for that. With those $1,600, might as well just invest it in a, go for the J&D Catwoman. You know, $400 more, you get the Catwoman, uh, you know, something that is actually real collectible. So yeah, I get it. You know, they want to do some of the, you know, yeah, it's cool for some people, but I don't know. This is something that I was like, nah. And I seen it, I seen it because I think they have done this before. I seen, I think variants of this or versions they have done in the past. I'm not, not impressed from that for $1,600. That's just, that's just a rip off in my opinion. You know, sometimes nega and uh, oh, I'll see this one, which, you know, sometimes people want to find something, an alternative, not to buy the expensive stuff. The alien centimorph trophy plaque. I get it. You want to have something that is not so expensive, but this is almost $500. I'm okay. This should be no more than 300 to, in my opinion. Because this doesn't have the quality of Cinemacat. It doesn't have the quality of the other companies that have produced Hollywood collectibles who have produced this type of things for years and they just blow, mind blowing. You know, the quality, the paint job, everything is so perfect in detail. This is a lot of, you know, it's just foam and plastic. It's not even that great of it, you know? So yeah, I don't know. Not feeling it. Only weights 12 pounds. Oh, let's see the weight of Batman. I see how much he weights. For $1,600, he should have. He doesn't have the weight. It's just foam. Even the face. Look at the face. Looks cheap. No detail there. He doesn't tell us how, you know, the, the size. Six feet tall. And then you have this other. $700 for a Cinemorph egg and face hogger life size. Man, for that, I just go for the, I, you know, for that, for $700, I might as well just get a Prime One Studio One that they give you this as a gift and get one of them as, a, you know, as one of the little, of course, on the scale is a quarter scale, but it's all right. But in my opinion, if it's going to be like that, you know, some people may see the fun of it and I, I get it. But I don't think if it's gonna be made out of this, it's not polyurethane. It's not like any of that. It's it's just foam. Well, like this is his prop replica. It doesn't say this is foam. The other ones are foam. And when I look at them, they definitely look like foam. And to be honest with you, and you have a child holding, 
Oh, that's not a child. That's a girl, but it's like a child. Sorry. Now I look at it. She's older. But yeah, she's holding it like... And if it's foam or it's plastic, it just looked cheaply made. Nah. It requires batteries. It's not even like... You can even connect it. This requires 3D... 3 AAA batteries. It's just... Oh, my God. This LED lights that requires batteries. They should have just go for like, you know, you can connect it with a USB or connect it to something like that. I don't know. I'm telling you, there's sometimes, you know, we spend money in things that are silly, you know, and I have my good share of silliness stuff. I have my, my good share of silly stuff, you know, like I spend money in silly, stupid stuff that I, my mind, I'm like, okay, I kick myself for doing such a thing. But you know, there are times where I feel like, you know what, if you have a $600 to spend, there's a lot of collectibles out there that i can certainly put my money on and i'll be so happy with and why do i need a life-size batman standing right in my room made out of foam i, I just don't get it you know uh quarter scale statue fine you know third scale statue well yeah, i can get it but uh life-size and it's not even great quality and it costs 1600 dollars in its foam i just don't see the point you know i sometimes i feel like you know like companies are just selling and nick is known for doing crazy stuff and actually pricing it high you know, and I love that that's some of the stuff they do, but some of the other stuff that they produce, I'm like, you know what? You know, Nick, I think you're just smoking some good stuff and not sharing with all of us. You know, I don't know. <laughs> it's just my opinion. All right, my friends, all of you, thank you very much. Uh, yeah, this is the Corey. This is right there. Crazy thing. John Wick is coming next month from J&D. Wow. Yeah. That is something really looking forward. I'm looking forward to see what they're going to do. John Wick. I love John Wick. So we'll see. We'll see how they kill it with the Keanu Reeves likeness. And the, you know, I don't know, man. I'm telling you, like, this company, uh, there's a lot of things for everyone. You know, at the end of the day, you do whatever with your money. If you want to go for the NECA stuff, the styrofoam, and you, it looks cool, and you want to create, like, a movie theater scene or whatever, you go for it. Because that is actually the purpose of those type of this, the foam things, is to have in a movie theater and some arcade stuff. You know, they don't break easily. You can put them there. Children come to the arcades, and they kick it or whatever, and they paint it or they pee on it or whatever. It's not going to damage. You know, it's not like a high-end collectible. But even at that, it's because it's cheaply made, it also be so, you know, they need to sell it cheaply, you know, and they, they don't want to put the, like a collectible price tag on it, like a high end collectible, which is not, that's not a high end thing. So I feel that, okay. Some people might like it. I'm nothing like the NECA. I talk about NECA, connect NECA stuff. You know, this week we have the, finally the video of the NECA, the, the, the turtle van, from NECA, which I received it back in December, waited forever to, re to review it. But, you know, I love that kind of stuff. NECA does amazing figures, you know, and they do really great figures. But sometimes when they go into, like, the bigger stuff, sometimes they're like, okay, I don't get it. What is it that you're trying to accomplish? You know, it's, you know, stay in your lane, NECA. Just do what you do best. You want to do collectibles? Do them right. You know, you want to do statues? Do them right. Uh, in any case, my friends... We are at the end of the video. It was an amazing video. We are allowed to talk about definitely a little heat up. And you know, I talked for a while about the McFarlane toy stuff. I was really upset about it in the end. But at the end, I said, you know what? And maybe I was heated here in the conversation, rethinking about it. But at the end of the day, it comes and goes. You know, like, I'm sure that they, I'll find that statue at some point in life and time. Maybe I'll find it for a good deal somewhere. Even if I pay a premium, I'll find it somewhere. Somebody will. At least, at least I know that they, there are some people out there that are going to resell it because, unfortunately, there's always that. The people that are able to get more than one, you know, by all means necessary. And, they, of course, they, the market gets flooded with them. It happens all the time with a lot of these like, special edition things. Even with that van, like looking at that, um, the NECA van the, that I just talked about, Total van. I see that they're selling like crazy on the aftermarket. They're selling it for a lot. You know, like people are selling them, you know, for double the price. Um, but, you know, there's so many ones that are being sold that eventually they, some of them are going to go down in price. Uh, even like happened with Super 7. Super 7 was selling like crazy. What what was that? The, uh, the and I haven't really done the Thunder Tank for um, the Thunder Tank, uh, the Thundercats. That came out. It was 500 bucks and special pre-order and all that and now and then all of a sudden they were available in many places even in amazon and amazon this week was selling for 300 and i didn't even pull the trigger so you know these are the things that sometimes you know just have to wait that's the waiting game uh and we can play the game i've been playing this game for a long time so you know i i'm not i don't quit i'm just 
you know, I just, I, I wish the companies would consider and make better decisions when they do certain things and, and, you know, for everyone. Um, and I think in that one, I think they dropped the ball. I think my father dropped the ball, uh, not realizing, not really thinking that this is a, a span has a comp span is a character that people love. And it's fun as a character that has been for 30 years in our in our psyche. It's been in our world in the pop culture. And there's no many collectibles for spawn. I don't know what is the reason why is that the to be honest, Todd doesn't allow for spawn to be produced because many companies would be willing to pay the money just to have the license. And I think he can do it. He can have SciShow produce and stuff. They'll more be more than glad to do it. Many other companies will be more than glad to get the license. Why is it that he always holds Spawn so dearly to his heart, doesn't let anybody touch that? He's the only one that produces statues whenever it's possible, but nobody else can. All we get is custom pieces. And, you know, it would be such a variety of statues as possible. And it's just a matter of him to letting go a little bit of that franchise, not just to always hold on to it in a way that, you know, he's not letting anyone touch it. You know, for collectibles, you know, I, I believe me, I, I, I'm I, sure that companies like Prime One Studio or any other company will be able to do it. I hope that now I'm thinking about Prime One Studio, maybe Prime One Studio has an announcement and we get like a spawn figure. I would that would be awesome. But so far, we don't know. Nothing has been said. And of course, things can change. Um, but it's something that we've been talking about. We've been thinking about it for a very long time and it hasn't happened. All right, my friends. Again, thank you very much for being here with me tonight. It was a pleasure as always. Um, again, as I mentioned early in the video, next week I'm not gonna be here. I'm going on vacation with my wife, celebrating our 20th anniversary, so we have to celebrate. Uh, so we're gonna be gone, uh, so I'm not gonna be back for Friday. And, um, you know, like, we are not, I'm not gonna be able to to live stream even the 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 showcase of Prime One Studio. But when I get back, I, I'll, I'll 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 share my opinion. I'll talk to you. I'll let you know how I feel about the whole event and what I think. So the surprises and everything, we, we'll talk about it. Uh, yeah, I would like to see my friend loosen up on Span. Yeah, it's time for it. You know, I don't know. I don't know why he's holding on to it. Like do we, the, the statues can be produced. You were tired of Batman. Batman is overly produced and he sells. You know, and I think Spawn. It might not be as popular as Batman, but for for a lot of people, it's a top tier character and deserves to the same level of respect. So I don't know. I don't know. I, I sometimes, you know, this some people love their own creations. They don't want to let them go. But I don't think he would be losing anything. As a matter of fact, he would be making money out of the creation even more because, of course, now you have license says people paying licenses just to have his product. And I bet that he, it can do well. It can do well. All these companies can do it. Prime One Studio, XM Studio, um, uh, Sizer Collectibles, you name it. Every company you can think of. He has relations with a lot of companies, Diamond Collectibles. He has relations with every company. So um, let's do it. You know, I don't know. What, what are you waiting for? In any case, my friends, uh, again, good night. Thank you very much. Uh, stay tuned for more. Um, We'll talk about it. I'll see if there's any surprises this week. I've made some videos that I've been working on. I've been working on videos that I, they've been waiting in my... They've been sitting on my computer for years and I haven't really finished producing. So I need to get back to some of those videos. Some of those videos are actually fa family trips, things like that we did years ago, like two, three, two years ago, a year ago, and I never really had the opportunity to, to share it. So I need to get it done. All right. Well, peace out, my homies. It's time for me to go. It's time for um, enjoy your evening. Um, I hope the best for you, wherever you're at. And uh, have a blessed night. Have a blessed weekend. And I'll talk to you again. Take care, my friend.